Hello and welcome to another episode of the Libre Podcast, episode 6, sponsored by Base.Win. Visit Base.Win today, get yourself a tie-dye tour tee. Let me full screen so you guys can see this amazing merch. The orange tie-dye tour tee, personally, my favorite version of the tie-dye tour tee. You can get it today on Base.Win and you can get it for 10% off if you pay in Monero XMR. And of course... My co-host, Mike, the employed Linux user, is here, who uh, had to prepare for, uh, what do they call it, a nor'easter? Yeah, they call it nor'easter, yeah. Yeah, a nor'easter yeah. kid. Did you get lots yeah. of bread and lots of milk? I did. Um, let me do a last-minute check of the French Coast Alert System. I think I told you about this before, um, the French Coast Alert System. Um, I don't think so. Is that our version of Nerve? So the I Japanese think, yeah. named their alert system after some anime thing, and we name it after food. That's very American. <laughs> we name it after yeah. fatty breakfast food. It's uh, it's this website that's been going for, I think, about 15 years now. Um, they basically they have four tiers, depending on how how urgent it is to go out and buy bread and milk for a storm i see uh and to me it has never been inaccurate it's always been accurate as to if we're gonna get fucked or not uh and it's at three right now which is the second highest or the third highest level so i'm not too concerned um so I, what i don't get is people who move here for the first time and act like the world is gonna fucking end because we're getting snow well to and be like, fair you don't to need be four. fair as a uh, lad who has spent a lot of time in the South and recently uh, moved back to Dixie. Um, actually, <laughs> that that reminds me. I, I actually found out today. I probably learned this in social studies before, but I had forgotten it. And then somebody was telling me about it, and I was like, nah uh But then I, I Googled it, and they were totally right. Virginia had the most slaves. Yeah, right before the Civil well, War. Like, I'm sure well, the was, numbers fluctuated up and down a bit, because I thought it was Mississippi or Alabama, and um, I think, the, or no, Mississippi and Georgia, and I think Mississippi was, like, number two and Georgia was number three, or I might have those backwards. And it's not well, by it a whole lot. Largest. Say what? It was one of the largest states, and at that point, one of the oldest states, so it makes sense. Probably a lot of people there who have been there for a while. Yeah. So. But, um, anywho, as a southern boy... As a good Southern boy who grew up here and then became a Southern gentleman, um, when it snows, uh, the the world is fucking ending because we don't know how to act. Our governments don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> it's it gets really stupid. Even though a lot of people have trucks, like we could realistically, uh, you know run snow plows and shit like put them on there i could probably even put one on my truck and uh you know be one of them good old boys that puts on some yeah. some lo-fi beats drive around drinking some hot coffee you know plowing plowing the roads but we don't do that we just you know wait till the last minute and then uh in atlanta well this is before i moved to atlanta like one year one or two years before Apparently they put sand down to try to melt the snow. Yeah. To melt sand. the snow? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. That's that's what my sister was telling me. That they put down they, sand they, instead of salt. They put down <laughs> sand to like have have like some sort of grippiness to the to the uh, I think the that's what it was, but they were doing it on top of like before they melted the snow or like just at a time where it wasn't really appropriate. There were a bunch of people on uh Oh, I forget which road it is. Well, there's there's a couple different highways in Atlanta, but like people abandoning their cars and shit <laughs> over like two inches what? of snow because they're just so what? they're so under equipped. I mean, if, look, if it snows yeah. here, maybe even today because we've got some heavy rain and it's kind of cold, we might actually lose power here because the fucking infrastructure is held together with duct tape and bubble gum and uh, zip ties. Some of the essential oh, the are valid. to fix anything. 
Yeah, zip ties are like essential redneck tool number three, I think. Yeah. Duct, duct tape is one, WD-40 is two. Zip ties are number three. <laughs> That's why I carry them in my truck. Yeah, so, I knew someone who lives in Florida, and uh, they're allergic to cold weather. Like, they break out in hives if it gets below a certain temperature. Really? And I'm like, how? why, why are you still alive? I don't know why <laughs> humans evolved an allergy to cold. Well, he is Florida man. He just evolved differently. I mean, you know, he's he can't tolerate cold like you can, but you can't wrestle a gator like he can. That is true. I cannot yeah. wrestle a gator. So that's that's what I'm saying. There's different. I also uh, don't have the training to use an alligator as a weapon. Right. Exactly. So see, it's all about yeah. it's all about different skills. And you know, speaking of people having different skills, I'm starting to question. Uh, Elon Musk's skill at running the social media site uh, and actually making a profit off of it because like that's the thing right I, I've said plenty of times that uh, you know when he tried to turn it into a free speech platform it's really free speech like little TM little trademark logo right next to it because like in all ways that you would define free speech like it's definitely not free speech based on our first amendment in the united states uh the software isn't it's not entirely like libre i mean it's it is partially because there's a lot of twitter clones and stuff like that and a lot of the source code is gpl even the algorithm which uh by the way have you seen the github repo for twitter's uh algorithm i have not all right, they so have, they actually I, I'm actually surprised they open sourced it. I remember talking about that. Well, uh, it's that it's kind day. of a meme. It's kind of a meme because like <laughs> just go to the issues on that, the issues tab or the um the pull request tab when you have some free time. It's basically just a place where people shit post on GitHub. But there's a lot of new shit posts there each day and like they get deleted and stuff too, but yeah, it's a uh, it's the ultimate shit posting. <laughs> repo on github but um yeah they've so he acquired twitter for what was it 44 billion dollars which sounds like a whole lot of money right like even if you're one of these super rich like top one percent people that's still like half or uh, you read in the repo i am <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great um uh, broken pronoun <laughs> setting not removed in the x android app <laughs> yep yeah so so anyway like that's what it seems like it it seems like it's become uh sort of like a gab or a, a truth social maybe i don't think i've ever really been on truth social but um i think i, I signed up for a gab account because i get emails from it i get a lot of spam <laughs> from gab and uh yeah, it Gab originally was supposed to be um, Twitter for those who are openly based, right? Isn't that how Gab started? And then I think Truth Social was yeah. the same thing, but like Trump specifically, which it's really a Mastodon clone. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's a Mastodon it, it, clone. Well, Truth Social is just Gab, but it's an open honeypot. So people who don't know how to use Gab go to Truth Social, and they end up being a part of the honeypot. Oh, okay. So it's a Trump honeypot. Yeah. It's going to be the best it's honeypot. It's a Trump honeypot. Yeah. <clears throat> mm hmm. Okay. But yeah, so he, he paid 44 bills, which sounds like a lot of money. Okay. I mean, that's, that's what? That's like 22 max cash stacks. Okay. That's a lot of money. And he's obviously trying to make money with Twitter, right? Because it's it's behind more paywalls than it was before. Like, it's a lot harder to... Like, you really can't browse Twitter without an account anymore, right? At least not yeah. on um, actual, like, X Twitter, you know, the official one. There's some front ends where you can, like, browse archive tweets and stuff. Like, Knitter, obviously. But um, it's it, he's trying to extract as much money as possible out of it. The, the API is for sale now, right? Like the paywalls are a lot higher on the API. But the advertisers are leaving. 
in droves, like a ton of them. Walmart stops advertising, Onyx, uh, Apple, IBM, Disney, like a lot of the big players pulled out. There's even a bunch of Canadian companies <laughs> that stopped advertising Onyx. Um, now, I, I think like they're going in and they're going out, right? Like it all it all kind of depends. Like I think some of it had to do with the uh, the um, based posting that uh, he, he was doing that we talked about on the last episode. Um, and then he kind of he did his totally not an apology tour. And then some people are like, all right, we're going to give we'll give him another chance. But like. Is he ever going to get that money back? Does he even care about getting the money back? That's that's the question, too. See, that was my question. That was my thing when he first purchased it. Is I don't think he bought it to make a profit off of Twitter. Because how the fuck do you make a profit off of uh, essentially a glorified message board that people well, can use for free? Twitter did that. Like, original Twitter. They were they weren't profitable until I think like a year or two before Musk bought them, right? Um, actually, I'm not sure about that. I don't know the the timeline, but obviously they're getting people to invest in it, right? Because that's yeah. that's the thing. Like the money doesn't come from nowhere, <clears throat> and that's that's what I think Twitter is really more about. Because it's about communication, right? It's about and like that's even what Elon Musk was saying when he acquired it, right? He's like, oh, it's the town square. Like, that was kind of the the cover reason why he said he was buying it. It's like, oh, yeah, it's the town square, and the town square should be free and open, so I'm going to, you know, buy it, and I'm going to make it free and open, but I'm going to put these paywalls and these account requirement walls behind it so that uh, it's a little bit easier to track what people are doing within it. <laughs> um... But yeah, it, it seems like it's more about owning the most popular way to communicate. Because that's what I was talking about in uh, another video I did last week about how the Nerve app, which is, I guess, French toast, but it's for uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, landslides, like basically all of the types of natural disasters that occur in Japan. And they have an app that you can download. French Toast probably... Well, you said French Toast has an app, right? Uh, it's a website, but yeah. Okay, but they have an app, and they're probably on Twitter as well, right? Uh, the parent company is on Twitter. I don't, I don't use Twitter, so I don't know if they're on Twitter, but... Okay, well, Nerve is on... I'm pretty there. sure Boomer runs it, so I doubt. But You doubt they'd be on Twitter? Well, maybe they're on Gab. Maybe they're on Truth Social. Maybe they are on Truth. Yeah, they probably are on Truth Social. <laughs> and so if you follow those, uh, if you use those platforms, you'll get notifications. But like on Nerve, they, um, so they've got apps that you can download for iOS and Android. iOS doesn't really show stats about apps that people have downloaded. So it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, know exactly how many people have actually downloaded it. But, um, on uh, on Google, Google Play, it was about a million. About a million downloads, you know, across the whole Google Play. And obviously there's things like Aurora. Um, I didn't see them on F-Droid. And I guess you could also sideload the APKs. But at least as far as what's tracked, one million people downloaded it. On Twitter, they had two million followers. So it's like... Sure, you could download this app and you could have another thing on your phone that you only use whenever there's an earthquake, whenever there's a tsunami. I mean, I know they're kind of frequent in Japan, but like how frequent are they really? Like, it's got to be less than once a month, right? That there's an earthquake that matters in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. So do you really want to have an app on your phone that you use once a month? Probably not. Just use, you know, follow them through the same um the same app that you're on all the time anyway right like if you're on twitter instagram like whatever that's where you follow them but because of the api limitations on i think it's the basic one because they they actually bought an api plan on twitter but the way that the plan goes it's like i think a hundred dollars a month gets you 
you know, a certain number of tweets or a certain number of posts. And then it jumps up to like $5,000 a month to get like five or 10 times more. And like, that's literally the next tier of plan. And there's like, eh, we don't really have enough, you know, we barely were able to get the budget for $100 a month to x.com. Cause you've got to imagine if you're like, so this, in, this is this is a public utility, right? This is a government agency. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a government agency. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure because they have, there are accounts on X for like government and public utilities, which they made them a public utility after the fact, or I think that might just be the code name for the account. Cause a lot of this stuff is just like, you know, so new and just like, you know, make it up on the fly. <laughs> Cause there's, there was literally a, um, Japanese guy who works at Twitter that like forwarded this to Elon Musk because like the Nerve app when they when they were hitting the rate limit for their API um, plan they sent out a tweet they're like hey guys uh, go ahead and download the app I know it might be kind of hard to download an app while there's a you know 7.2 or 7.6 earthquake going on and tsunamis you know kind of makes the infrastructure uh, not work its best but download the app, please. <laughs> See, this is also why we need to have not not just decentralization in terms of not doing everything through Twitter, because like that is that is stupid. Like it is obviously not the best way to do it, but like at the same time it kind of is, because obviously they have more followers there. So it's like we need <laughs> we need to try to change what two million people do, right? Which is kind of difficult. Instead of, I don't know, letting you sign up to Twitter and be like, hey, this is this is not uh, something to send ads. Um, this is not an account for me to just post about my cat. This is an account that's going to save lives because people are addicted to their phones and people are addicted to this app. So can, can we make posts on here, please? <laughs> so that people don't die. They did Their eventually fix legit, it, though. just towards the end of the day. They're, the Nerve app's pretty legit. It's not just an earthquake uh, warning app. It does, like, weather and other conditions, apparently. I'm looking at their website. Okay. It's pretty legit, but it is Japan-specific. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I know why they rate limit APIs, because you, you can monetize that. I think... Um, what, didn't they, they did that with Reddit, didn't they? Try to make money, and then people made a whole big stink about it. But oh, yeah. it actually wasn't a big stink because it was people who were doing it for free stopped working, and they were like, oh, "Okay, well, you're doing it for free anyway. We're not paying you." Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, I think the awards, I, the awards were like, I think the only way that Reddit was monetized before, like gold, yeah. Reddit gold, and shit like that. So, which they actually took away. I mean, five. I mean, if it is, like, I can't really see if it's a government agency. I don't think it is. I think it's a company that just makes this and gets a grant from the government. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking um, too. I I, so, I researched into it more for the video, but yeah, so if, yeah. So five k a month doesn't seem like a whole lot if you're getting sponsored by the government. Maybe not, but it's like okay, look, you have to. You send the government and be like, hey, I need an extra 5k a month. And they're like, why? For an x.com rate limit and the government. Because, okay, you got to think about it. This is some bureaucrat, right? So you want money, five grand a month for x.com. They're going to tell you to uh, stop it and get some help. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's going to look sus. On, on that money has to go to a, that money has to go to a nondescript Middle Eastern country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Precisely. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They they did like I said, they did fix it. Okay, full disclosure, they're now like a public utility account or whatever it's called on X, which I think means that they can tweet or post or whatever as much as they want, but. 
<sighs> it just seems like we're gonna have a lot more of this, unless all these apps that are on Twitter, which, uh, I don't know, I have a feeling French Toast might be on there, but I wasn't familiar with it until you told me. Um, they need to ask Twitter. Be like, hey guys, yeah. so since this is the whole town square of the internet and everything, um, do you mind if we get unlimited screams in the town square? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Uh, I'm looking at the Nerve logo. Uh, the subtext is, is very interesting. It says, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. On the, That's on the Nerve app. Yeah. That's like their logo. Yeah. Um, There's also an anime I was expecting made for it, it to be. Of course there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's it's freaking great, man. Uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty base looking app logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so Fidelity puts its valuation X's valuation at seventy one percent less than what he bought it for. So there's no way it's a money venture, right? No, not 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 yet anyway. Let's see. Let's ask let's let's consult uh the comments of Fox News to get down to the truth here. The strategic this is from Southern Stray. The strategic value of Twitter is much higher than what Musk paid. Musk didn't purchase Twitter for the revenue. He did know about all the fraudulent numbers. Soros and others would certainly be willing to pay any price Musk would be asking for. Twitter is far beyond just an ordinary investment. Well then, yeah, some very, very base and red-pilled folks here in the Fox News comment section. Who would have guessed? <laughs> but then this guy, calm down and think. I, I love the usernames on here. <laughs> Bus purchased Twitter Stop, well, because he ran it. his mouth. Yeah. Oh, we're we're gonna get to that one in a second. I I saw I seen them flags. <laughs> <laughs> he made a legal application and he had to do it. Blah blah blah. And there's a man. There's probably a whole argument chain here with Bobby Five Libertarian 1957. <laughs> These are great cruel cool story, bro. <laughs> so what is this? What is this Chinese one here? Shop woke. China zone till you choke. <laughs> Musk knew big tech is controlled by the woke and often subsidized by taxpayers like the six plus billion dollar Amazon he received. Just like other non-woke businesses who don't get political policies slash regulatory favor and billions of tax subsidies, it will be difficult for X to survive. Snuffing out non-woke companies is part of the plan to construct the new world liberal order. Zero thumbs up, three thumbs down, 14 replies. <laughs> Just, we're not even going to bother fact-checking that. The, the man's got flags in his username. That's how yeah. you know he's telling the he's, truth. He's real. He's real. 100% real. All right. Um, so we're, we're getting a little problematic at this point. Um, yeah. You know, and X is also problematic. That's why the EU is launching a probe into it for alleged failure is to the EU not probing anything they're probing all of big tech man they're, they're like when i when i was doing mine when I, when I was when i was doing libre before or like um <laughs> like every fucking month they would be probing something like facebook or google or or x like at one point do you have have you have you fucked someone's ass too much <laughs> Like, geez, man. Hey, man, someone's somebody's got to do it, but I don't. I don't think this is. Uh, I don't think this. They is do that good work, base, though. though. I yeah, mean, they did get Apple's They're, move they're to talking US about percent. illegal content and disinformation. Listen, this is an American app, okay? We're all about the misinformation here, okay? You, we choose. Are here a man has the right to choose his own facts, okay? <laughs> All right, vaccines cause autism. That's just, that's a fact that you could choose. All right, that's your choice. Um, veganism is actually good for you. That's another, that's another fact you can choose. You can choose to believe that uh, cows cause global warming or that global warming's a myth. Okay, there's, there's a lot of different facts you can choose here. The alien, uh, what is it? The paper mache alien in Mexico is actually an alien, okay? That, that Warner Von Braun had tea with in Hitler's bunker. That's a fact 
that you can choose. But those commie Europeans, they don't believe in it. No. They think that the government should have to regulate what facts you... <laughs> what type of misinformation you get to consume. Alright, and let's consult Fox News comments <laughs> once again. Uh, I give Elon lots of credit for standing up for what he believes in and puts his money where his mouth is. Unlike liberals, he accepts responsibility. <laughs> Gladi no liberal re accepts responsibility. That's a fact. That's another fact that you can choose to believe in. Glad he isn't pushed around by advertisers. You know, the same ones who have 13% and all their effort. Whoa! My God, Fox News is, is okay. We need to move on to an actual apology topic because, uh, you know, the last episode of the Libre podcast got demonetized because uh, we were being too based. Um, so I actually got a uh, list from the ADL. Uh, I don't have it handy with me, but a list of things that we're not allowed to talk about. Uh, one of the things that was in bold, I'm, I'm allowed to mention it uh, in this context, but I can't delve any deeper, was just Mel Gibson. Uh, in all caps, bolded, and actually larger on, on the font. Uh, that's something they said we're not allowed to talk about. Um, we're not allowed to talk about uh, the... Um, uh, crap, what are those What are those car called? The Kia Boys. We're not allowed to talk about them or uh, other rocket surgeon activities. And we also have to cover certain topics... Uh, as a way to repent for what we've done. So that's what's up next, which is uh, Linux Femboys. So this is a subreddit that I stumbled upon uh, this morning while doing some very important research. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a phenomenon that I've actually been becoming more and more aware of because one of my goals for 2024, you know, new year, new me, is to learn Rust no matter how gay it makes me. I don't care. I'm ready to be fabulous if it means creating fast, blazingly fast, memory safe, safe and valid applications. So yeah, this is a this is a subreddit that um, well, I know some people are going to be interested in it. We're going to have to <laughs> check back on this subreddit in a couple of weeks. It's right now it has 547 numbers. We've got to pump them numbers up. So yeah, this this here, Ostalfo OS. I really hope this is actually a real operating system. You know, looking at this uh, this subreddit, it makes me think that I am one of the 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 rare Linux users who isn't uh, in one of these niches. Not niche, but I guess it's not niche in the Linux community because there's a lot of fucking people who are like this. Oh no! But, this is this is this is standard. This is in the standard library. Yeah, this is a standard library. <laughs> I, I exist in, in the Deva libraries. <laughs> the unstable. Because now you find a normal and a person who uses Linux daily and is somewhat normal. Yeah, that's Cause, cause that's if, something. If you, go, was... if you go too far down the autism tree, you end up in <laughs> you end up in this subreddit, <laughs> whether it's on purpose or not. Listen, I don't, I don't care. I'm going to build the greatest web application there ever was. I'm going to build the greatest e-commerce framework that there ever was, okay? Because I'm really, you know, getting tired of uh, WordPress and its nonsense and using other people's plugins and stuff like that, especially when there's so much functionality to plugins that I don't even like use or want to use, right? Because that's the thing. A lot of WordPress plugins or WooCommerce plugins in my case. Well, technically WooCommerce is just a plugin for fucking WordPress, right? So you literally take what is essentially a bloated blog framework and you transform that into an e-commerce framework. But there's still a lot of blog related shit that's enabled. So you have to then go and disable that blog stuff, you know, to try to de-bloat your website. And I mean, in all fairness, compared to like other e-commerce applications, I would say it's definitely the most Libre thing other than writing your own. Um, maybe, uh, 
I don't know, maybe like Salior. I think that's like a Python or a Django, one that's based on Django. Um, that's like a headless e-commerce type thing. But, you know, if you still want a CMS, that's probably the most libre, like WooCommerce. So I want to rewrite the back end in Rust, uh, probably using, I hear Axum is easier to use, but maybe eventually Actix, because I think Actix is still faster and maybe more popular. I don't know. I, don't, I, I think Actix has been around for the longest, but then there was that controversy where the, the Rust community basically bullied the, Act, the original Actix developer out of Actix because he was using too much unsafe uh, code. Your code's got to be safe. It's the whole point of Rust. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's <laughs> in in this like neat in these various communities, right? Especially with the type of overlap where it's using Linux, right, and specifically using like Arch Linux. I mean, literally, this uh, Astolf OS is Arch, but with surprises. Uh, <laughs> like to do that. To use, um, I think Vim is another one. I think there's a little bit of uh, latent homosexuality within the Vim community. Um, definitely within like the general ricing uh, yeah. community. Although I don't really use a rice uh, of like, I don't know. I use a boomer rice. I'm using a Windows XP theme for XFCE right now. I've I've been having to use GNOME because I because we support KDE GNOME and XFCE in my job and. Uh, my other coworker uses XFCE, so I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna use GNOME, so that if I, some fucking boomer comes up and asks me about a problem, I'll probably know how to fix it, because I've most likely <laughs> dealt with it myself." Um, and I, I will say, I did spend a little bit of time racing GNOME, and you can make it pretty decent. Um, granted, you can't have a, a toaster like you normally would run Gen two on, but. It's not bad. I think I think I've kind of gone. Uh, you know how you have the cycle where you start with Windows and then you move to, or you start with macOS and you move to Windows and you move to Linux and you go all the way down, and then they come all the way back up. I think I've just skipped that entire bottom swing and just am back at the top, but or I'm back at the at the part of the tree where I'm at Fedora and Red Hat. I've just skipped that whole bottom bottom swing into autism. So you're telling me you didn't follow this trend here? I can't. I can't see it, but I, I'm assuming I know what you're talking about. Well, he starts off as as definitely a guy, um, which is what's his uh, user Reg at Ubuntu MacBook. Okay, so he's using Ubuntu on the MacBook. Then it's me at Debian HP. Um, all of a sudden, his his sense of fashion's gotten a little bit better, I guess. Um, slimmed down a little bit. Then he's uh, using Bash on Fedora, and he gets caked up. By the way, this, I mean, is, that's, this is within two years, 2017 to 2019. That, Maybe he's doing squats. Okay, yeah, Maybe. I was going to say, that's me. That's me, honestly. Because, you know, I, I, I do squats. I do Bulgarian squat squats. Okay, you know, I... Right. Well, speaking I, of I, me... I vibe with that. Speaking of me, in 2020, he becomes me at Arch, by the way. And uh, he's even more caked up. We're See, that's wearing, where I stop. We're wearing programming socks and short shorts and a cut-off I, I top. I stopped in 2019. And uh, at 2021, I think I think this might be a, um, it's a beautiful young lady. Right? Is that a lady? What happened here? Um, I can't um, tell. I don't know. 2021 it might it might be an L stuff it might <laughs> it might be one of these it might it might have a surprise under there <laughs> might be concealed carry <laughs> it might be concealed carrying <laughs> yeah and uh yeah just uh save that for later purposes um so yeah let's uh let's let's see there's got to be at least a little bit more we're gonna get more out of this femboy if it's the last thing we do 
a Mago S. I've actually used the Mago S. It's it's just another. Uh, is it sussy? Because this is, is sussy. A, this is a sussy ass was right here. <laughs> my goodness. I literally sent uh, my girlfriend this, but it was the Rust handbook instead. It was a better Photoshop than this. <laughs> And it's like it's so accurate. I'm telling you, I'm gonna I'm gonna get good at Rust, even if it makes me trans. And uh, what's going on? Yeah, you're on just gonna here? show up one day on on webcam with programming socks, and I'll know what happened. Programming socks might actually be kind of comfy, because I mean, okay, okay. Let's approach this from a practical standpoint. All right, okay. I'm fine. Yeah. All right. Do you wear um, thermals? Like thermal pants, like those tights, I, when it gets real cold. Yeah, I do. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, programming socks, into strictly from a uh, heat retention, uh, strictly for heat retention purposes, would retain heat, just like those would, but not. In, like, the crotch area, because they don't come up to your crotch. They only come up, like, um, well, let's see. There's, there's... <laughs> so there is a subreddit called Unix Socks, which is literally just pictures of programming socks. If you want a more, you want a wider um, basis of evidence mm. of case studies. Hmm. Unix uh, Socks, you say. So what these look like to me is, because I've worn... Um, soccer socks like those those long ones that go almost almost all the way up to your knee but the reason they're long is because they cover your shin pads and i have i've worn them before um when i was playing soccer obviously not because i'm I, I i'm a programming socks person um but i will say yeah you're right they do retain a lot of heat but i mean i i'm just a sweatpants this, guy and I wear now this socks. post concerns me this i think we gotta I think we might have to call the police about this post. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> is this the one with the person in like the the cave? Yeah, they're in a cave. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Where the fuck is that? <laughs> this is. Oh man, you dude, dude. That man might be dead. <laughs> you think so? He, he he probably is dead. This man's a I, commando in the Ukraine right now. He was Jeffrey Dahmer's last victim. He's not black. He'd he didn't kill be... exclusively black people. Yeah, but he preferred chocolate. What the <laughs> fuck is this? What? They're running three different. They got three different computers here. This is <laughs> Jesus Christ. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OP answered, and and they said they're in, they're in the sewers where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, I mean, I get if you're like twelve and you want to go exploring with your friends, you go in the sewers. So how you get taken by an evil? Oh, there's a clown, there's a Nintendo but... Switch in this in this picture. <laughs> yeah, we need to notify the police about this person as well. We gotta call what's what's that guy's name? Alex Rosen. We got we gotta refer this guy to some these people to some predator catchers, because this is this is suspicious af. Alright. Um Alright, I think we've met our ADL ab obligation for now. Um there's there's gonna be more similar topics later on. We're gonna talk about gay space communism. But anyway, we're getting back to uh We're getting back to uh nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Apple, are you invested in Apple right now? Uh, no. You should be if you're doing stocks, man. Apple is the biggest company there's ever been for a while now. Why wouldn't you invest in, in Apple if you're if your goal? That's not very ANCAP of you, my friend. All right, you're missing the plot. We talk, we talk shit about Apple for profit, and then we take those profits and invest them back in the Apple Corporation <laughs> to turn that money into more money. Come on, you're, you're I, not on the train? I, I sympathize with, with the first comment on this post. Uh, I keep saying it can't possibly continue to get any bigger, and it does. So 
Because I'm always I'm always thinking that this thing can't can't get any bigger, and eventually I'm going to be a bag holder. But it just continues to grow. I it think, does. Yeah. No one's stopping them because they're the best at brainwashing people. And you know what? Honestly, the EU might successfully bully Apple into being based because they're requiring side loading to be a thing, which to me is huge. Being able to just es essentially install whatever the fuck you want, right? It depends on how it breaks down. Um, you know, whether there has to be, like, approved stores. I think that's kind of how it works now anyway. There's, like, these developer certificates that you can get, but developers have to pay, I think, a lot of money for it. I don't know, at least $100. Um, but if it can be, like, Android, where you go to a website, download an APK, click install, and, like, a warning bubble pops up, it's like, are you sure you want a heckin'... <laughs> install an apk that you downloaded from truth social and it's like yes absolutely <laughs> let the fbi oh. track my location uh yeah like you can if 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 that can be a thing on apple then it's so close to being based the only other thing it would need is the ability to install custom roms and at that point i would totally get an iphone because if it's if it's open source right which i imagine being able well, I guess being able to install a custom ROM doesn't necessarily mean that iOS would be open source. But if you have the option to run at least open source software, maybe not necessarily completely free and Libre software, but at least open source software, install apps from wherever you want, basically de-Apple your phone, just like you can de-Google a Google Pixel phone, and you're just paying a company for the hardware, I'd be down for it. Because... I'm at the point in my life where I can actually afford Apple hardware. Like, at first, it was just, I don't want an iPhone because that shit's too expensive. So, you know, I used, like, usually I would use Android phones that are a couple years out of date. Which I guess I still kind of am doing that. I mean, I've got a Pixel 6 Pro. Um, really, the only reason I didn't upgrade to the 8 Pro at launch is because there's been all these weird defects with the 8 Pro, and Google's response is like, oh yeah, getting bumps coming up through your screen because capacitors are trying to poke through. That's just normal. Don't mind that. It's a feature. It's a tech feature. That's the new Braille feature <laughs> <laughs> for our uh, Pixel 8 Pro. Yeah, like if that phone wasn't you know, sus and kind of shitty. I would have probably just went and upgraded and got that at launch. But yeah, like, from my research, it seems like iPhones are the most efficient, like, in terms of RAM and CPU usage and stuff like that. It seems like they pretty much have the best cameras. I think sometimes Samsung ends up beating them in cameras, but, like, for the most part, it's, it's the best, like, phone that money can buy. That's my interpretation of it. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, their hardware is pretty good. They, they're they they're very good at making hardware. Their OS, it depends on what you like about your OS. I've maintained the opinion for the longest time that Apple has probably the most secure out of, important part, out of the box operating mm -hmm. system. Like, you don't need to do a whole lot to an Apple operating system to make it secure. Unlike Windows, where you have to do a bunch of stuff. Um, well, they've gotten better at it anyway. But that's why I think they're very attractive to people, especially people who haven't had Apple before. I mean, I have had I have friends who don't use Linux and are very against Apple because, I don't know, they just hate having to switch ecosystems. But there are people who are attracted to Apple devices because of their... Uh, their marketing is very good, obviously, but I think they have a pretty solid reputation. Well, and, plus uh, it has the same it has the same core utilities. Yeah, and it's like I mean, it's still isn't you it can still, still you don't have Unix to go fully into the OS? ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. No, the thing I I just don't like how locked down it is, and like how that's my yeah how like you can't really customize it and stuff like that like if i just you know on a whim want to make mac os look like windows xp i don't think i could do that so that's yeah, but how many people 
how many people beyond the community that we're in want to do that? Well, no, like, I mean, that's, that's exactly the point. Apple device, that's why they, people, they don't care. That's why people like this guy, fucking Warren Buffett, that's why he invests in Apple. You know, Berkshire Hathaway's $356 billion portfolio is mostly in Apple. <laughs> He's totally on the Apple train. Um, I guess not so much in Tesla. I think he was in Tesla before, back when Tesla was more legit. But yeah, um, or, well, I guess back when the stock was doing better, <laughs> is what I should say. Uh yeah, so it's bigger than the entirety of France's stock market. You know, Apple should get into making um, high-speed rails, right? Doesn't France make really dope high-speed rails? Or at least they have a really dope train system. I don't know if it's necessarily considered high-speed, if it's like maglev or whatever. They have high-speed, it's not maglev, but okay. yeah. I think a train, I would ride a train that's, that's made by Apple. Would you get on an Apple train? I mean, depending on, you know, how big the butt plug seats are, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, you get on, you get in a seat, and then you can't leave. You can't change your seat until the ride's over. suction cupped. <laughs> can't change your seat, can't change your car, even if there's a, a homeless man. Actually, though, the homeless man wouldn't be allowed in the Apple train. Yeah, no, we don't do that. In the they, they, would, would, they, would, they would scan your, your government-implanted biometric ID and see your... your net worth is below a certain limit they fucking yeah you off the apple train. yeah we don't we don't do low income individuals well there would be a voucher for you know diversity <laughs> of course there's that there's gonna be a lot of diversity on the apple train but uh, only if you're gay only gay minorities are allowed on the apple train no yeah. no straights allowed <laughs> But yeah, they, they have the most secure hardware out of the box, especially now that they fixed the back door that existed in iPhones and I think all iOS devices for the last four years. Did you hear about this? I did. Yes. Yeah, that's... So, like, <laughs> you know, my, my take on it, right, which, you know, is a bit of a tinfoil hat take, was that the Alphabet Boys... Uh, probably worked with Apple to uh, make sure that there would be that specific command that you could send to those specific registers to uh, unlock it. But maybe the back door was a little bit too obvious. And so other hacker people found it <laughs> and started um, started causing some trouble. But this is the other question right is do you think it was the u.s well maybe you can't comment on whether it was the u.s or not because you were probably involved with it if it was <laughs> <laughs> that spied on moscow yeah i the, the the interesting part i read is when i read that it was many of it belonged to employees of kaspersky i was i just uh i laughed a bit yeah yes. you don't you don't fuck with kaspersky man i mean you remember where did you work at geek squad before kaspersky got banned I, I did i worked right when it um i worked right when we took it off yeah yeah, yeah they started banning it because we had a little red scare here in america <laughs> where it's like hey that's when that's when trump was in charge right we can't we can't lose any no russian software no russian so listen the russians do a yeah. lot of great things they make great vodka even though i don't drink they make uh no, we had Beautiful women, like my wife here. Well, she's not really Russian, right? She's from one of those other European she's countries. She's from the politics, I think, yeah. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we can't we can't let the Russian Listen, Russians make great software, and their malware is too good, too. We can't run it on government servers. Which, honestly, I think that actually makes sense. I, I think, like, because, you know, Russia is still, like, especially now with this Ukraine thing going on, which is, you know, if you call it a proxy war, people get upset. I, I think the ADL told us not to call it a proxy war. We're, um, we're supporting a member of NATO. That's what they told us. So, yeah, we're supporting a NATO member, I think, right? Isn't Ukraine in NATO now? Isn't that, wasn't that U part of Ukraine the... Is not, Ukraine is not NATO, no. Okay. If, if Ukraine was in NATO... We're doing the right uh, thing. We'd that's, be... That's what's going on. We're doing the right thing. Yeah. We're supporting a, a country that was wrongfully invaded um, yep. to the tune of billions of dollars. <laughs> only only, only after they were invaded. 
Not the uh, first time. Yeah. Second time. You get a free pass to invade any country once. Second time to when we draw the line. Oh yeah, that's right. They did do it twice. I forgot about that. <laughs> never mind. Just once. assumed that they owned it now. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Never gonna get fooled again. But yeah, why? Why would like anyone? Like, if I was the Russian government, right, or if I'm just, like, the guy in the, like, KGB or whatever that's in charge of making the rules, or the, uh, I forget what their new security service is called. I'll just call it KGB. <laughs> uh, some, the Cyrillic Alphabet Boys, right? If I'm one of those guys making the security plan for, like, politicians and people's working in embassies, I would probably say no iPhones at all. Like, there's plenty of Chinese smartphones which i mean the chinese will spy on you too but the chinese are like i think kind of their friends right don't the chinese and yeah. russians get along yeah they so, kind of a mutual agreement that they hate the u.s it's not right. keeping them together right yeah they're like listen these these americans over here they're getting out of hand all right they're naming their weather apps after french toast <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten ridiculous but yeah they um they patched the back door that was in iOS. So now it's totally safe, guys. Okay? You can you can you can use your iPhone and not even the FBI can hack you anymore. Uh we we promise. Pinky promise. Okay, you're able to use it now. And uh they also patched the flipper zero vulnerabilities, because you used to be able to do like basically a denial of service on iPhones that had Bluetooth turned on. Yeah, spamming mass pop-ups on iPhones. I talked about this a while ago. Um, yeah, denial of service. Could hit all iPhones in a 30-foot radius with pop-up notifications, enough to make the Apple device lock up and require a restart. So not just a denial of service, but it would actually make a crash. <laughs> a, little, a little piece of plastic that's like, what, $100 or something like that? Versus, uh, or that's probably what an MSRP is for, because I think there's a shortage of these too, right? People like reselling them on eBay for like triple or quadruple the price. Yeah, sounds about right, but I don't know. I had... What would a DDoS like that be effective for? Then, well, if you're near DDoS somebody, thing. it's not remote. That's true. Yeah. So, but I mean, that and would then, yeah, totally be a near thing. someone. But like, well. I guess doing it near an embassy would be pretty effective if you want to be able to counter intel. Well, no, this is for... I mean, first of all, the fact that they're using a Flipper Zero, like, this is this is script kitty shit. So yeah. what it really would be is, like, people would come into Best Buy <laughs> and they would probably do this on people's iPhones that are, like... They would, they would do it to troll us, like, when we were Geek Squad employees. One of them would just come in with a Flipper Zero... And we're sitting there trying to diagnose like someone's Bluetooth, and they're just like off to the side, <laughs> clicking the flipper zero. Dawson's yeah, that would be the only thing. Yeah. Yeah, making a boomer think that there's Russians in their iPhone. Okay, you've been you've been asked to remove Russian spies from people's phone before. Okay, you you know how that goes. Working <laughs> at Geek Squad. <laughs> When a 70 year old, when you've been watching Fox News all night long, and you think there's yeah. Russian spies when, on your uh, iPhone now. When, when Rajesh pulls up the uh, the netcat on your laptop and shows you all the foreign addresses, explains to you how these are all foreigners inside your PC. Oh my god, my stepdad had that happen to him a couple months ago, where someone's like, Yes, sir, there is. Iranian IP address, Chinese IP address, very dangerous Chinese IP address. And my stepdad was just like, well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, Mr. Rakesh. I have a, I have a, a, a computer security guy that's going to be coming over here tomorrow. And instead of paying you 10,000 rupees, all I have to pay him is a fresh steak that's it pretty good deal yeah man dude i'm actually this this is a uh, man i should have put the video on here i might actually have it in a, a folder um 
the uh i got a uh oh, what's that what's that cut of meat called a whole beef tenderloin they had them on sale at Damn. uh the grocery store near my house nice and it's like probably some of the cheapest beef that i've ever had because well like not not cheap as in low quality because it's literally a tenderloin is what you cut steaks out of like you cut um okay i think i found it yeah so this was like eight pounds um let's see are you I, can't, I can't even get a whole tenderloin up here i can only get cuts of a tenderloin well, that's the thing. I bought the whole tenderloin and I trimmed the silver skin off of it. I trimmed some of the fat off of it. And then I literally just started cutting it into steaks. Um, are you able to see it? I can't. You can't? No. Oh, wait. I'm not sharing my screen with you. Let me do that. Okay. Now I think you can see it. Yep. I got it. Yeah, so I just cut, like, I don't know, two and a half. I basically just put, like, three fingers up. And, uh, boom. Top of your steak. Bottom of your steak. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah. look at that. That's good steak right there. That's pretty good. Look at that. Tenderloin. Yeah, man. And it was... How much was $44 for an eight-pound tenderloin. That's, like, close to five-something pound? Yeah. $5. Yeah, a little over $5 a pound for basically um, sirloin steaks, or if I would have trimmed all the fat out, like if I were to trim um, kind of like this part off, that's basically a filet mignon, which is like, I don't know, upwards of $20 a pound. So yeah, man, you see how I'd be eating? You see my raw honey over here? <laughs> that's what I'd be putting in my tea. And... Uh, Eating those fresh eggs. Speaking of which, I've been getting so many eggs, man. I've been getting, uh... I got four today. I've actually got the eggs on deck. Let me, uh, sing them a song while I grab these eggs. Damn. Man's got eggs. So they're here in my uh, lunchbox, and uh, I don't think Mike's gonna be able to see my eggs because I, I can't do see I can't do the webcam, but it'll be in the recording. So this one I think came from a Bard Rock. I don't know. It's a little bit darker, but yeah, that's an egg. Either from a Rhode Island Red or a Bard Rock. This one, pretty sure this one's a Bard Rock. Because it's a lot lighter. Like, it's almost white. And there's another Bard Rock egg. This is just today, and this is like kind of low productivity because I've gotten six in one day. Um, I think actually yesterday. Yeah, I got six, and then the day before that, I got six. Which is, like, more eggs than I can even really eat in a day. Mm. And then I got this one as well. So this is a, um... They call it, like, an Easter egg. It came from, um... Well, an Easter egg... I, it, I'm not even entirely sure if Easter egger is, like, a specific breed of a chicken, or if it's, like, kind of a general term I, I think easter egg is kind of like pit bull in the sense that there's like a bunch of different dogs that they refer to as it but yeah these are like these eggs are so good too because they're uh my webcam's all blurry now there we go yeah these eggs are so freaking delicious man So yeah, steak, eggs, rice. 
it doesn't get much better than that. That's like the best breakfast you can have. Yeah. All right. So bigger macros than that breakfast. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, that's that's basically the diet that I'm uh, sticking to. The vertical diet. It's like the two macros is red meat and uh, rice, and then like you know spinach and um, eggs. Like it's basically about trying to eat stuff that's very nutritional, but at the same time very easy to digest. Because like if you try eating a lot, like if you try eating sort of like regular food that you're eating all the time, especially if you're eating fast food and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to increase the calorie intake to like 35 or 3,600 calories a day. You're going to feel like shit most of the day. You're not going to want to lift. But doing that from like steak and rice and eggs is a little bit easier to do, even though it makes your farts smell like a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> it's uh, It's horrible. Yeah. So this uh, news story is another... Thing that i thought was pretty pretty freaking cool man because you know this is another reason why apple makes so much money with uh the lockdown setup which is um the fact that they pretty much don't let you virtualize it well for a long time they didn't let people and that's what they were suing core corleum about is not letting them virtualize like it's so it's basically if you want to develop for ios but you don't necessarily want to buy an iphone or an ipad or something like that you can run it virtually in the cloud and just pay you know a few dollars each month or something like that which makes sense but apple didn't like them doing that and uh they settled and um I believe they said that they were able to run it. Yeah, I believe that was the verdict of the case, that they're able to actually keep running it. And it's not like copyright infringement or anything like that. It's considered fair use. Yeah. Yeah, you can get an iOS emulator on macOS. So I think if you go as virtual machine, you can do it. But uh, I remember hearing about Corellium couple of years ago because uh, they were like the only people actually off offering ios virtualization uh without actually needing an apple device so i'm surprised that they uh that they settled and uh, it seems the courts in florida are pretty based that was apple's mistake but they probably had a file in florida because uh this requirelium is based yeah um let me see Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Corallium's based in Florida. Damn. That was, uh, that was a great move. They stay in the, in the in a based state, so Apple can't can't pull their uh automated gay space communism on them. <laughs> They're protected. I don't I don't think we're gonna get the uh fully automated gay space communism from a company like Apple. They want it to be, uh, or it'll be only be allowed in the walled garden. That's the only uh, way it, it'll be allowed. Yeah, probably. All right. And also Japan is, uh, bullying Apple <laughs> demanding side loading. They had to double down with the one, two punch Remember the last time that happened when America or no, when Europe and uh, <laughs> and Japan collaborated. So, yeah, they want they want to force them to allow side loading on iOS. So basically the same thing that uh, the EU market was demanding, which I'm pretty sure that the iPhone sales in Europe are a lot higher than they are in Japan. But um yeah, that's that's going to put a lot more pressure on them to actually allow the side loading. Oh, I might have yeah. to get me an iPhone, man. It's almost time. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping that the that the side loading support eventually it's, it's not going to come to the U.S. by force. That That's for certain. Um, 
So I'm hoping that other countries push the needle enough to where Apple makes it standard on their operating systems. Um, because you can sideload on iOS now, which is a giant pain in the ass to do so. You can you to, do it um, without the developer certificate then? You can. Yeah, you can. Oh, it's okay. just that you, you either pay for the developer certificate, which takes like fuck ton of money, or you can pay. No, no, sorry. Or you sideload the app and you get like a free developer certificate, but you have to renew it every week. So you have to like keep either keep a, a sideload server running on your network, or you have to connect it to your computer and refresh the certificate every week. Otherwise, your app stops working. So okay. it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it is doable now. Still. Uh, which I did use for a while, and I I have been using. Because I, I pirate shit. Well, you should... Uh, well, there's got to be some apps out there that aren't just, like, pirated that are... Doesn't, um... Doesn't Fortnite offer their app that way? I think Fortnite got into a yeah. battle with them. That would be a good uh, tutorial think, for the Employed Linux channel. I think Fortnite you can still get from the App Store, but you don't have to buy... The in-app purchases don't go through the App Store anymore. Ah, the in-app purchases go through okay. Epic. Yeah, that was their whole fight. Got it. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, everybody wants those V-Bucks. That's all my nephews were asking for. But instead, I gave them steak and eggs. <laughs> That's my based Christmas gift to my sister's side of the family. Steak and eggs for everybody. Because I bought two of those uh, big old um, tenderloins. And pretty much cut up one for them. Well, there's a couple pieces of it left that I'm going to be having next week when I set up the elections over in uh, my stepdad's county. Because he works for the... Um, what is it, the board of directors or something like that for the elections, so it's it's kind of a good gig. I don't know if I told you about it, but um, I basically, there's these, uh, I think it's a F-350 or, you know, some other big truck that the guy's got where he pulls a trailer that's full of all these voting machines and signs, like telling people where to go vote and stuff like that, and we have to go to the different like facilities where they're going to be holding the elections in. Usually it's like churches and community centers and stuff like that. And just set up those machines, set up the signs. Um, there's these little doorbells that you put on the signs that ring a ringer indoors. And that's for like, I guess, to help people with disabilities with voting. So it's, it's doesn't really take that long. I mean, it can be knocked out probably within five hours and you get paid $150 for each day. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty good gig. You also get reimbursed for the gas. Now, here's the real question. Are you injecting the voting machines with the ghost of Fidel Castro? <laughs> I don't, because all we're doing, we're nothing that we're doing is, like, electronic. We don't program the voting machines um, when we get them, they're they're actually kind of cool. They're like, they almost look like the, uh, I guess kind of like the nuclear football. It's like a big suit, kind of suitcase type thing. And it's got these like anti-tamper seals on it. So we're not authorized to open them or break them or anything like that. We just set up these... Um, we, we basically set up the thing that they, like, go in to. It's like a stand, and then I guess it's like a machine that kind of inserts into that. But we don't actually touch the voting. Well, we touch them, but we don't touch any of the software on them. And there's no, like, USB yeah. ports or anything like that where you could try to mess with it. It's, uh... The elections in Virginia are definitely secure. Like, there's a... Dude, there was this whole thing about an election with um, the police. Uh, I think it was, like, sheriff election. They had a recount. It was it was a whole thing. But th there was literally no difference in the votes. Not one vote was different. Or I think, no, I think maybe one vote was different. But it wasn't even enough to change the outcome or anything like that. So it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's, there's occasionally some electoral political drama here in Virginia, but yeah. 
It's worth it for the chickens, man. It is. It's worth it. You know, uh, you know, uh, New Hampshire has open source voting machines. Really? They do. Well, a couple of towns are using them, but uh, in October they certify the usage of open voting machines statewide. So municipalities can now choose to use VisionWorks or not VisionWorks, um, VotingWorks, which is an open, which is a company that makes open source voting machines. So, New Hampshire continues to get more based. Yeah, the second most... Well, they have the second most based... Um, what's that thing called? State motto. Virginia's is the most based. Is it, isn't Virginia's state motto just a uh, six emperor Tyrannus? Indeed. Yeah, you guys just stole that from the, uh, the assassin of, <laughs> of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Well, not really, because that, that goes back all the way to Rome, but most famously in American history, was said by John Wilkes Booth before he shot Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. The whole, uh, the whole, um, the whole live free or die thing is pretty cool, but it's not as based as Six Summer Tyrannos. So check this out, man. Have you, have you ever had a fresh egg before? Have you ever seen a fresh egg? I have. I have had fresh eggs uh, when I was over in Europe. So you remember this? The uh, the orange yolk? Yeah. I'm telling you, man. That's it's, another fresh. It's, it's impossible to go back to um, to an egg that's uh, just yellow and sad with no, no hints of orange. Because this is how you know that the chicken got to touch grass, it got to eat Z-Bugs, it got to live a free life instead of just being fed artificial food in a cage so small that it can't even turn around and live its life like a chicken's supposed to. Yeah, man, it's, it's a lot of fun. You're gonna really like having chickens when you move out to the country. Good morning, chickens! <laughs> Making... Yeah, little first crow of the new like year. This. It's time for your daily egg inspection. Now, daily egg inspection. What is this that we have here? Yes, this egg came from you, young lady. What? Yeah, this this hen here needs, um, I don't know, some disciplinary action to be taken because she keeps laying eggs on the floor. Well, she has been getting a little bit better. The past two days, she's the one that lays those like bluish green eggs. Why are you laying your eggs on the floor? What's the deal with that? Yeah, I was gonna you say lay the uh, eggs in the nest. Okay? Can you just lay them anywhere and let them sit? I'm gonna place you in the nest. I, I couldn't hear you over the loud ass cock. What was that? So they just lay them on the ground like that and walk away? Sometimes, yeah. Well, she does. She's the one that does that the most, but like, we'll see. So that you get the idea. So I have these nests set up, and they're anchored now. Someone on Instagram actually uh, recommended, by the way, base.win on Instagram. Make sure you follow me if you're uh, using the Zuck Honey Pot. I know some of you out there are. <laughs> um, a lot of you out there are, actually, because there's a lot of users on IG. But uh, anywho, um, they said that I should anchor down the nest, because at first I just had the nest sitting in there, which, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, because, I mean, it's literally a milk crate with hay and like one or two wooden eggs inside. Cause if you put fake eggs in there, it basically like tells the chicken, like they go over there and they look at the eggs and they're like, oh, there's eggs in here already. This must be where my eggs go. It's, it's exactly the same concept as um, the streets in India actually, right? So what happens in India is one person shits in the street right? The boldest amongst them. And then everyone else sees it and they're like, oh, there's poop in the streets. This must be where my poop goes. And, and you know what? It's not even just an Indian thing because the same thing happens in San Francisco. One homeless person started shitting in the street <laughs> and all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, this is where my poop goes. <laughs> so chickens are the same thing just with eggs. <laughs> you, put, you put a couple eggs in a nest and, and most okay, of them get the idea. <laughs> You see how there's an egg in that nest? This could have been your egg. 
But instead, this is a barred rock egg in a nest, because the barred rocks get it. Isn't that right? Good job, barred rock. Yeah, the barred rocks are also from Massachusetts, so that might be why they're more intelligent <clears throat> than some of these other chickens. They went to Harvard, kid. My birds are wicked smart. They're educated in Northern Yeah, why Florida. don't you tell your girlfriend? I might, I might kill this. Rocks this, get it. This bird. Isn't that right? Good job, Bard Rock. <laughs> that guy right there. He's been acting like an asshole lately. Keeps trying to fight me. <clears throat> yeah, why don't you tell? Yeah, I'm looking at you, Ar. You might end up uh, going in the freezer, and Big Red might become the new Alpha Rooster. Your girlfriend here to lay her eggs in the nest. <laughs> what do we got here? Those are both wooden eggs. This one's a wooden egg. So you plan yeah, to that use any of these eggs to make more chickens? Hmm? Are you planning to let them sit on any eggs to make more chickens? Uh, maybe. The thing is that using a chicken to hatch out eggs is, like, just not very efficient. Like, it's so much more efficient to use an incubator. Um, because a chicken, well, it depends on the size of the chicken, but it's only able to hatch out maybe a dozen at once, you know? Like, they can only kind of occupy so much space. Um, but the other thing with a chicken hatching out eggs is you really want to, if they're going to do it, if you're going to let them do it, you want to have them do it after the last frost date or pretty close to the last frost date because their body heat just isn't as efficient at keeping eggs warm as an incubator is. And, like, just strictly from an efficiency standpoint, it makes more sense to use an incubator. Now, obviously, with my farm, you know, and I'm doing the whole, like, verifiably organic thing, it might make some more sense because social media is going to be a large aspect to the farm. That's, like, the whole reason why I post farm stuff on Instagram as well as YouTube. And, uh, I don't know, maybe on X, but I think you got to pay money <laughs> to do that. Or maybe you could post once a day. I don't know. But, um, I might just do some for, like, for, for the heck of it, you know? Like, let them hatch out six or seven chicks. But I think the majority of chickens, especially once I start really streamlining and breeding my own, it's just going to be done in an incubator. And then um, I think you can give the baby chicks to a hen and she'll mother them as well. Like, I don't think she necessarily has to hatch them out herself to be like a mother hen. Because the, the hens will teach them how to do stuff. I mean, you can teach them too. The only things you really have to teach them is where their water is. They figure out how to eat. They figure out how to scratch on their own. You just got to show them where water is. I got one of your egg colors for a reason. Also, the only chickens I have right now that'll probably be good moms anyway are the barred rocks, because Rhode Island Reds don't really sit on eggs. Um, they're not really good mothers. They're the kind of moms that want to go out to the club while their child is just, like, sitting on the floor. <laughs> sitting on the floor next to, like, a loaded handgun and, like, random cleaning products from under the sink. <laughs> <laughs> and all the caps are off. <laughs> That's your average Rhode Island red mother. This is your nest, young lady. Okay, that's where you're gonna lay your eggs. <laughs> I don't think she likes that nest. Do you want a different location for your nest? Is that it? I don't know. Oh, mamma mia! We got to so many eggs in this nest here. See, I think this is a chicken egg too. Yes, it is. Mom, were you able to tell which one was a real one and which one's fake? For an egg? Yeah. 
Because those eggs uh, look really realistic. I had to mark them. Yeah, go back. One check again. Check. It wasn't actually. You can't see the marking. Big two. Yes, it is. Eggs in this I nest here. So the only way that you can really tell in this one is that the wooden eggs are the a little bit. The fake one looks glossy. a bit shiny. Yeah. Yeah. That one right there, right in front of your hand. Yeah. That one is that the fake one? Yeah, right in front of my hand is the fake yeah. one. To the it a looks, little bit it looks to pretty the right. Shiny. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they're not as shiny as they were because they've been out there for a bit and they're starting to get like poop on them and stuff like that. So they're not like when I first put them out there, I remember I put a post on IG where I was like, can you tell which one's real, and which one's fake? That was like, I don't know, four or five days ago. But now it's it's kind of to the point where it's getting harder. I literally have to look at the bottoms of them because I took my knife out and just like made an X on the bottoms. I should probably actually mark it with a marker or something like that, though, or like a little piece of. I've got um, organic paint, so maybe I can just paint a little dot on the bottom. See, I think this is a chicken egg, too. I wonder what they're thinking as they just take the eggs. Mamma mia, so many eggs. <laughs> She's just looking at it like, what the hell? Why so did you Lemon, take would you prefer eggs? this nest? <laughs> There's two of your color eggs in here. Probably the opposite of what uh, your average mother would Tell her, Barbara. Her a child. Tell this girl where she's supposed to lay her eggs. You can lay in here, Lemon. <laughs> you really just don't want to lay in a nest, do you? You just want to be defiant. Get your girls under control, AR. You got one of them who's out of line. She's laying her eggs in the middle of the floor. See these Bard Rocks, they've they're down with the program. They're all laying their eggs in the nest. And not even going broody. I mean, I'm really surprised that you're not going broody. All right, well, let's take a final tally from the morning egg inspection. I mean, imagine going to McDonald's for breakfast. Oh, imagine going to Dunkin' Donuts. Can't even hold them all in my hand. One, two, three, four... Imagine going anywhere but the base farm for Five breakfast. eggs. On the first day of the new year. Not bad at all. Yeah, man, when you come on down, get you some eggs. Yeah, man. You can feel... Dude, <laughs> there's been a couple of times that I've gotten eggs, and it's, like, literally been laid a couple minutes ago. You can still feel how warm it is. They actually come out of the cloacas very, very warm. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is what you can have if you just follow in the way of Sneed. But if you follow in the way of Chuck, uh, there's another appealing thing you might get, which is fully automated gay space communism. Which is the plot of this show that I've been watching called For All Mankind. It's, it's honestly, it's a really, really dope show because it's like probably my favorite genre of like television or, or just my favorite genre for stories and things like that is alternate history. So you got like one or two different things happen in the timeline and it just makes everything go completely different. Like there's different presidents that are getting elected. And the one difference between our timeline and and the timeline of For All Mankind is the Soviet Union, instead of them being, like, 40% gay, they're 98% gay. 98% of people, and this is before the, the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So we're talking, it was it Uzbekistan, uh, you know, Ukraine, all those countries that are supposed to be part of the Soviet Union, that are supposed to be part of Mother Russia. Uh, they're gay. 
all of them. Well, 98%. There's 2% of like breeders who don't really want to do it, but they do it for the sake of Mother Russia so that they can beat the capitalists. And because everyone is gay and everything is communist, they're a utopia that manages to not only get the first gay man on the moon before the Americans do, but they also get the first gay woman on the moon before the Americans do. And they both came, well, well, first the guy came in a man's ass. That's what he said in Russian. He said, at first I come here in a man's ass and then I come for the Marxist-Leninist way of life. And it's like, oh no, all the Americans are devastated across across like the whole land and so what happened well actually i'm getting a little ahead of myself right so nixon is president at the time and and nixon's like oh gosh how were they able to get someone on the moon faster than us and and they're like sir it's because they're 98 percent gay and nixon's like it's too late for us to get gay we have to get you you get me a straight white man on the moon this instant and before they can even do that they, the Soviets managed to get, like I said, a, a lesbian woman on the moon who also established the first no-kill cat shelter, the first Subaru dealership, and the first book club on the moon all by herself. Well, you know, also the three or four other lesbians that they sent with her. So after they do that, then Nixon comes back and Nixon's like, damn it, there's only one way we can outdo the Soviets this time. You get me a gay black woman on the moon. And so then NASA's like, but sir, we don't, we, we don't have any women in NASA, especially not a gay black woman. So they're like, damn it, you find one. You go down to Harlem and you get me one. So, so they go down. This is all, com by the way, these are all spoilers. So if you haven't watched For All Mankind yet, uh, sorry for spoiling it, because this is exactly how the show actually goes goes down. So they go to Harlem, and they find this uh, gay black lady that the CIA walks right up to her, and she's like, damn, why y'all glow so bright? And they're like, don't worry about that. We need a black lesbian like you on the moon. And they're like, how you know I'm a lesbian? I got a boyfriend that was in Vietnam, and he went crazy. And they're like, we know it's a cover. We know it's all a cover, okay? We know you're gay and, and you can't admit it because the black community that, that, that we, you know, manufactured their culture to hate gay people, to, to hold them back because we secretly knew that, that homosexuality is, is actually the true way to achieve a utopia. Just look at what the Soviets are doing. They're 98% gay and they already have no-kill cat shelters on the moon next to Subaru dealerships. I mean, it's crazy. They've got dance clubs on the moon. They're selling poppers. It's, it's crazy. The, the, the sheer efficiency <laughs> that you can achieve <laughs> when all your astronauts are gay. It's just that the U.S. couldn't match it. So, so they, they have to take her from... Well, first they have to kill her entire family because her family's religious. Uh, and the, like, like many people in the black community. And so they don't like... That's why they don't like gays. And that's why she had to pretend and uh, date a guy who was shell-shocked in Nam and went crazy. So they end up sending her to the moon um, and another gay white guy who has a wife um, and a kid. But then the kid later on uh, gets killed in a... Um, Caitlyn Jenner actually ran him over um, and he died on, on his bicycle and so um, the family had no repercussions because uh, the guy was, you know, straight. Well, he was really gay. Like, that's, that's where it came out in court. They tried suing Caitlyn Jenner uh, for killing the kid. And the lawsuit got thrown out because Caitlyn Jenner um, was so brave. And the guy suing was a straight white man. And they don't have rights. So... Then he's like, but wait a minute, but I'm actually gay. And, and he presented all this evidence, which was um, 960 gigabytes of video, all saved to floppy drives, by the way. So you guys do the math there because it's the 1980s. <laughs> and um, um, try, tried to prove it, but, you know, it was too late for that. So then... He's like, you know what? I'm going to become the first gay astronaut in space. And so they assemble a crew of this guy, uh, a black lady, right? The first black lesbian in space. 
And then another guy who actually was straight, right? An actual straight white man. And it turns out he went crazy on the moon because the moon was already so gay that if a straight man went there, then he would, he would start um, singing show tunes and losing his mind. So they wanted to send him back, but they were going to pull his, his pilot license because they were going to make the rule be that you can only fly planes if you're gay. Um, but if you're crazy and you're straight, then you're not allowed to fly planes anymore. So what happened was the black lady accidentally fell and uh, broke her arm so that they could cover for the straight guy who actually ended up being gay anyway because of the radiation on the moon. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really great show. It's just, you know, if the Soviet Union was just a little bit gayer, we could have had fully automated gay space communism on the moon. They had, um, like, face ID. Like, the technology advanced so quickly. Because just like in our timeline, where the Soviet Union was less gay, uh, we developed all this technology as a result of figuring out how to get to the moon, right? Like, I think it was Velcro we developed... Um, some type of like radio comms and things like that were developed like as a result of going to the moon. Uh, a bunch of gay black ladies invented a new type of math to do the calculations to get us to the moon, I'm pretty sure. And um, that would have just kept going if the Soviets were 58% uh, gayer. Okay. How much of that was creative license? Because I'm, I'm actually interested to see how much of this is actually in with the series. All of it. I just spoiled the entire first season. Damn. Yeah, you know, the, the way that they... Season, very gay. I, the, the, the way that they pushed the, the, the trailer, it actually seemed like a legitimately uh, decent alternate history series about the space race, but it, it is literally every character in like every astronaut in that movie gay in some form. No, I made that damn, even you can't keep up with my with my irony, with my sarcasm. I don't you think have there's multiple layers. There, okay, there's only so in all seriousness, there's only I think two gay people in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two gay people. Um, and then there's a black lady who we're pretty sure is not gay. But she was, she is the best astronaut, though, that, that ever walked on the moon. Mm. Yeah, that could have been, that could have been our reality if, um, you know, if, like I said, if the Soviet Union was just a little bit gayer. But instead we live in this alternate timeline where, um, Twitch allows nudity and then is like just kidding guys <laughs> and then immediately pulls it did you hear about that i did yeah it and, lasted uh, all of like four hours maybe it, yeah they they banned it and then people complained that it was sexist because apparently it's it's sexist to prevent your platform from being flooded by cam girls and i think the the board members saw how much fucking money they were raking in by essentially being a score version of of, uh, of cam girl sites like Omegle, and um, we're like, yeah, <laughs> like Omegle. It. Um, first of all, I think I think you got the cam part right, but it's it's cam boy, and just actually cam man specifically, just cock and frame. <laughs> That's what Omegle was about. Ideally, you know, showing that to underage children, because why not? <laughs> yeah, so, dude, Amigo I mean, got shut it, down, though. It did? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right, it did. Amigo's that's right, dead. it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you, so if you go on Twitch.com, like Twitch.tv right now, and look at... Uh, let's see. Is it safe to be brought... Okay, hang on, let me pull this up. So there's, <laughs> there's, there's one... There's, like, two females... And you have Hassan, who's a grifter. Uh, some other guy named LV and D Mark. Uh, I don't know who half these motherfuckers are. I'm seeing a lot of video games. I, I know, I know, I know who Pokemon is. Isn't like that one of the one of like the 
people that gets a lot of money from Sims, or am I wrong? I think she's the girl that did the OK Boomer dance. And, yeah, that turned into, like, probably simp money and stuff like that. I'm reviewing the front page. I think my algorithm... Well, I don't even have a Twitch account, so I don't know what, like... Yeah, I'm just on this on a... I don't have a Twitch account either, so I'm, like, not getting any... Because a lot of the comments in, in that post were people like, oh, I go on the front see a fucking bunch of half-naked women. And I'm like, where? Is this Binding of Isaac? I'm like the John, John Travolta meme. Like, where the fuck is all this shit you're telling me about? I see Hassan. Um, looks like people are playing GTA. Um, it looks like it's a lot of gaming stuff, which is what I thought Twitch was about. Yeah. About gaming, but I've heard about uh, was it the swimming pool meta? That I think if you go to just chatting, you might see a little bit more. I think yeah, yeah. I don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Just go to just chatting. So go scroll up. Yep. Uh, you're at the top right now. Yep. So go down to categories, like on the middle of the page. Go to oh, just okay. chatting. Oh, and I that's see. That's where you get it. Yeah. Um, hang on. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I might have been a little go. slow to the draw there. Okay, we've got um I believe the word for this is a pog. <laughs> we got a pog. There's a lot of anime. I, I yeah. think I think the current uh current modern day term for that is a yat. Uh, my oh, uh a what now? Isn't it called a gyat now? A gyat? Yeah, if if my zoomer. Are we talking about the anime thing or the pog? The pog. I don't know what a giat is. I know a pog is a fat ass white girl. Fat is spelled P H A T. Oh, I thought I thought you were just referencing the ass. I'm like the ass itself is now called a giat. Oh, well, maybe. I didn't I didn't I didn't quite get your. P A W G. That's I think that's yeah. a millennial thing. All right, I believe. I'm doing one last scan to make sure everything here is appropriate I'll, I'll, by you. Because YouTube's terms of service is slightly different. <laughs> I'll slightly pre-scan different. it for you. Okay, there's one. I scrolled past the pog. I think, I think the Asian with her tits about to pop out is okay. Because it's above there, above the nipple is covered. Yeah, there, there's a few that are like a little sus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to um, show the screen. All right. Okay. So, this is what it's become. But again, there's a lot of an there's a lot of anime AI people here. So AI is taking people's gerbs. These young ladies who have totally legitimate careers doing I don't know what's going on here. All right, I'm gonna scroll. Is it is it safe to scroll one more row? Uh, Do we have I the same? So. One? Okay, let's see. Well, let, me, let me just sync up with with your with your search now. Actually, I'm just I'm just gonna. Yeah, you should be good. I don't see anything below. Holy crap! Those are some serious abs on that anime girl. Facts, dude. Anime Where do I get abs. Those? Oh. All right, so I think this is good. I think every I think everything on this screen is halal right now. Yeah. Some dude watching soccer. This is not as degenerate as I thought it was gonna be. I mean. It seems like there's a lot of boring admin work. I mean, there's a guy here who's, like, doing administrative shit. And then there's some girl who's... I don't know what she's trying to offer. Um, CMO rest... Oh, nope, 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 nope. Okay. All right. What was this admin guy doing? Oh, oh let's click on his stream. <laughs> QuickBooks has a full suite of I got a QuickBooks head as well. Yeah. Gosh darn ads. Additional solutions as your needs grow. No, QuickBooks, you are not sponsored by the Libre Podcast. Let's get out of here. All right. I, I got to fix my list of topics. But that's a lot less degenerate than I thought it was going to be. Because I think the last time I had been to Twitch is when they had that uh, swimming pool meta going on. Um, so yeah, Twitch rescinded the, uh, decision. Now, there is one bit of degeneracy that I know about on Twitch. Okay, he's just putting in his macros. So it's not even admin work, it's just 
a guy fucking putting in macros on a sheet. Okay. <clears throat> Are you familiar with a Twitch streamer that goes by the name of Only Use Me Blade? No. You don't know about Only Use Me Blade? No. Well, to be fair, I only know about him from listening to PKA. Um, so my understanding is he used to be a COD player, like a Call of Duty player on YouTube back in like, oh man, what year was that? I want to say like 2007, 2008. It was, it was basically when YouTube, when being a YouTuber was first a thing, like where you could actually get monetized and you could get, um, actually he might've even been before YouTube started paying people. He might've been with Machinima. Because Machinima was, like, a way to get paid for YouTube videos before, like, Google directly was paying people. Um, so, yeah, he used to do that, and he was... He got popular, as his name implies, Only Use Me Blade, by slashing people in Call of Duty, right? Because that was, like, a one-hit kill or maybe a two-hit kill. You know, knife hits kill people really quickly in those games, so... He would just do this, like, commentary where it was, like, really chill, too. It's just like, hey, guys, it's Blade, blah, blah, blah. Just, like, real smooth criminal-type shit while he's stabbing dudes in their throats. And uh, I think he would tell, like, life stories and stuff. But anyway, you know, the meta on uh, YouTube and on all these other, like, entertainment platforms changes, right? Like, at one point... It was really great watching people play Call of Duty. Now, I think, like, Tarkov or maybe Rust are, like, the bigger games, you know, first-person shooters that people like to watch you play. Um, but Only Use Me Blade went a different direction because it turns out he has another skill in addition to knifing people in Call of Duty, and that is drinking Jägermeister. Or I think just alcohol in general, but I think Jägermeister is his drink of choice, which, by the way... If you're going to dabble in alcoholism, <laughs> don't pick Jägermeister. In fact, this is actually a good time for full screening, a good PSA here. So yeah, if you're thinking about dabbling in alcoholism, best thing for you to choose would be a strong liquor. Well, it doesn't even necessarily have to be super strong. I would say probably 80 proof or more, like a good proper whiskey or a vodka um maybe a rum but rum does have more calories i think it actually has the most calories out of all the liquors because it's literally fermented sugar cane but you know ideally a whiskey or like a vodka you know some type of clear liquor and drink lots of water okay if you're if you're thinking of not even necessarily just experimenting with alcoholism, but you're like, hey, I want to see what it's like getting drunk, right? Let's say that you're responsible, you're 21 years old, you've never tried any alcohol before, and you're like, hey, I want to try some alcohol. Straight up alcohol and water. Don't go with mixers, because the problem with mixing, like if you drink, uh, well, Jägermeister is literally a liqueur, right? Like it's, fuck, it tastes like, um, it, it tastes a lot like NyQuil, actually. If you've ever taken green NyQuil, yeah, I know. That's the same really? look. Really? Yeah, that's the same look that uh, my girlfriend gave me. But I like that taste, man. That licorice taste. I actually enjoy it. What is Jägermeister made of? It's, uh, well, I do have a bottle of it <laughs> around here somewhere because I drank a lot of it. On, uh... So, here, I'm going to full screen you and uh, sing a song. What is it? Well, I grab a bottle of Jägermeister. It's made with 56 herbs and spices. Oh, yeah, so there like you go. It's like KFC, but for, but for <laughs> drinks. It's like KFC, but for fancy German people. <laughs> it's only got 35, uh, 35 APV, yeah. Yeah, it's not that... Well, I mean, 35 not is... the strongest. Well, that's like... Actually, I guess that's kind of standard for a... Uh, not for a liqueur, but like that's the same... I'm pretty sure that's the same as the honey like jack daniels thing but um anyway the point i'm making here is you really don't want to get drunk off of a liqueur because you're not just getting drunk on alcohol but you're also getting like a sugar rush which actually 
can counteract the effects of alcohol. So you might end up drinking even more because you've got a sugar rush as you're drinking. It's the same reason that they don't sell, at least here in the U.S., they don't sell um, caffeinated beverages that have alcohol in them. Like they used to, I think Four Locos, and there were a couple other ones. Um, and there's even a mixed drink called a Jaeger Bomb, which I'm pretty sure is Jaegermeister with Red Bull. Uh, which I've never had before, but I probably really love it because I love both those drinks. But it's dangerous to do that because you're mixing uppers and downers and then you just like, you end up drinking way more and getting way more drunk than like you think you are. And then when you hit that caffeine crash or that sugar crash, you feel so awful like the next day. And not to mention that, well, alcohol is empty calories anyway. So you're just adding alcohol on top of sugar. It's empty calories on top of empty calories. So... Best strategy, right, for, like, getting drunk, if you're just trying to try it responsibly, is a good vodka or a good whiskey and drink lots of water. Like, I'd say for every, probably every two drinks, drink, like, an eight-ounce glass of water, at least. And, uh, yeah. But Blade, Jägermeister. <laughs> He's drinking straight Jägermeister with no water, no nothing. And this is what happens when you do that. You end up um, basically drunken Mr. Magooing your way through a swatting. Because in some ways, I feel like that's part of the reason he survived this. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like swatting isn't as dangerous as it used to be. Obviously, it really sucks. But I feel like police kind of sort of know how to deal with it more. Eh, I'll just play the video. It speaks for itself. Hey, Brian. Brian, Brian, I see my side. Brian. Hey, can you talk to us, Brian? Oh, they can see him. Okay. I didn't even notice that that was a uh, glass or whatever. Hey, I gotta smash hey, the glass. It's you appropriate. We did. But yeah, you can see that they're outside in the window. Hey, Brian. Can you face me? No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. No, you Brian Riso donated. Is he? It kind of sounds like he's he's got, saying the uh, the N word over and over again. Go ahead and see if I'm bluffing you. I dare you. Sure yeah, like they probably recognize that me. voice, that like automated yeah. thing. Are you okay? No. Anonymous donated four dollars. Fuck, fuck, fuck the police. 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 Fuck, fuck. This is what we have instead of fully automated gay space communism. I hope you're all happy with it. Because this is the We're timeline the we live part. in. I, I, I just see some cops outside chilling. I think I can, I think they're outside. I really can't tell. And some dude who's absolutely zazzled <laughs> in auto, in auto text to speech, saying "fuck the police." Is this this is the timeline we deserve, guys? Where's the man getting abused by the police? Where's, where's my where's my police brutality? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but Blade is white. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, I should tempered my expectations. Yeah. Subscribe to me if you want, but I don't. Oh yeah, you can see the cop outside. He's he's looking at. Oh, this guy here is Zaxto. That's a good four dollar investment right there. Yeah, bro brings a riot shield. You bring a riot shield in, dude. You larp it. Brian. Hey, what's going on? I don't even know why that chick has her taser out. Dude, yeah, See this shit here this shit here is dangerous. This is this is the okay. Seems like a LARP, bro. Seems like a LARP. Let's see what's going on here. So we've got Okay, homie's got the riot shield. That's standard procedure. Okay. Because someone probably called the cops and they're like, I I have machine guns and Israeli hostages. <laughs> so you got to show up with the, with the riot shield. And 
I don't even think. Yeah, he's he's not even holding a sidearm. This guy doesn't have his gun drawn. Only this chick. Only the female has a gun. Has a taser fem- drawn. Yeah, only the female has a fucking taser drawn. Like this is this is that shit, man. Where it's like, I honestly feel like maybe I don't know, eighty percent of the problem with cops is just people who are like not not strong enough or not fit enough to do the job, either physically or mentally. Tell, I can't I can't tell if she's actually has her finger on the trigger. I can't tell. It's kind of low. Quality. I don't think she does. It looks like well, I'm not that familiar with with tasers, but it kinda looks like the trigger guard is right there. Yeah. And she's got the her her hand like you know her fingers straight yeah so yeah she's not on the trigger yeah she's definitely not yeah 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 but she's still pointed at him like he's gonna there's two men in here and the man is fucking sloshed he ain't doing shit <laughs> he ain't doing nothing like you would you would at least think like okay maybe you don't necessarily know he's drunk but you've got to know he's on some kind of downers because this is some downer shit this isn't meth this isn't crack this is you know, man it, it ate some fucking gorilla tranquilizers. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's he's down for the count, but she's just taser ready to go, ready to go. And the other cop is touching him, so well he's got gloves on, so it might not zap him if she zaps him. But hey, Brian, let's see webcam hey, gone. What's going on? I think she just holstered it. There's mm. someone. Uh, yeah, that sounds like something getting uh, holstered. Hey, we have medical on scene. We want to make sure you're okay, okay? Uh, Do you know where you're at? Uh, you don't know where you're at? Uh, How much you have you had to drink tonight? Have, uh, paramedics come up to where my truck is parked. Can you let Swanee in? How much have you had to drink tonight? Uh, All of it. Did you have medical come up? Yeah. yeah. One yeah. handle of Jägermeister, oh, copper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, is your down. name Brian? Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has just donated five dollars. How much have you had to drink tonight? Yeah, this happened on New Year's Eve. This dude got trashed. Absolutely trashed. So yeah, that's that's the type of degeneracy that that they do on Twitch these days. <clears throat> it's uh they're not sending their best to twitch no but youtube's not much better either uh someone got demonetized for posting steamboat willy on youtube well i don't i know that the uh the actual character itself is in public domain but i don't think the the cart like the actual cartoon animation is of course it is it is is, is it the whole yeah. cartoon or just the character the in- it's both the entire cartoon and the character but the trick with with steamboat so this is steamboat willie it's not actually yeah. mickey mouse this yeah, is just like the that. first incarnation of it so you can basically yeah. like do this kind of mickey mouse like aka steamboat willie um, and same thing with Minnie, because Minnie is in Steamboat Willie, and then the cat. I forget the cat's name. And then also the cow, because I think I remember the cow and a couple other older... Well, actually, I think the cow is even still a current character. I don't know. I'm not I'm not really that far up on my uh, Mickey Mouse lore. But um, the the whole thing, because the copyright on it's expired, so it's it's public domain now. Like, literally every frame of this video. And, like, a bunch of people were uploading videos uh, this week about, like, basically them voiceovering Steamboat Willie. Like, that's literally what the guy who um, posted this. What is it? Uh, Brock Baker? Yeah, in fact, actually, since it's public domain, we can watch his uh, video as well. But, yeah, it's it just goes to show you how fucked up YouTube's automated copyright system is where <laughs> they they literally demonetize Steamboat Willie. I mean imagine. Yeah, here we go. So 
let's see, this article was written on the 4th and this was uploaded a day ago. So yeah, it took them about a whole day to resolve. Bronx Dub. Legal disclaimer, Disney had nothing to do with this dub. This is just an immature 37-year-old man doing a bunch of crappy impressions over an old cartoon that is now public domain. Please don't sue, haha, -ha, oh boy, etc. <laughs> I really do like this animation, though. Yeah. Like, especially when you stop to consider that all this was drawn. Every frame had to be hand-drawn. Oh, no, my bucket! Wow! Oh, my God! Wake the fuck up! Who's this little asshole? What the fuck? What was he, made of taffy? What the fuck? What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to take a dump down there! <laughs> oh, I got a finish in my pants. Oh, who's making poop noises? Oh, God, it went back in! Oh, that was the bucket he was using! I just bought these shorts! Oh, God. This motherfucker! Here! Have a bucket of peach shit, pal. You're gonna be dead by the end of this cartoon. Oh, what is uh, Time to rummage around in my pants. What the hell is this? Now I know. Now I know the cat from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's like one of those classic Mickey antagonists. Yeah. Yeah, I I like vaguely remember him from my childhood, but I don't know. I was more of a Looney Tunes kid. I know, like uh. Does Disney own Looney Tunes? No, it's Warner Brothers. No, Disney is Warner Brothers, right? Doesn't Disney own Warner Brothers? Yeah, it's know. Black. It's it's Black Pete. That's his name. I remember his name being Black Pete or Pete of Color. Sorry. Oh boy, we're gonna have to go back over. Head back over to Linux Fed Boys in a, in a minute. <laughs> Get all our apologies. <laughs> That's just the canon name, according to Wikipedia. Genesis is delicious. Is this, this, a, is this uh, a Bible? Peg like Pete or Black Pete? spitting out uh, Exodus? That's, that's more, a more racist name than Mammy Two Shoes. <laughs> Mammy Two Shoes made no mention it's of her color. It's the 1920s, and that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Pub Lord Malkop! Man, that's one hell of a move. Yeah. Oh god yeah. All right, time to ship you off to Jurassic Park and lure you into a T-Rex cage. I think that's what we're doing. All right. Here. Damn! Don't do that to the cow. <laughs> Damn, bitch! I thought you were thick with two C's. What is this? <laughs> No wonder Goofy likes you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, can't hear you. Gotta go. Bye. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have this weird perverted scent you talk. Everything on this boat is alive. Oh, no way. Is that sheet music? I love sheet music. Oh. Mm. Mm. You know, I feel like this is actually funnier than the Dude, original. come on! Stop looking! Stop looking! <laughs> <laughs> you know what else I love? Throat splinters. <laughs> <laughs> come on, buddy. I'm trying to get you <laughs> Oh, my, I can't be good. Ah! I wonder if his jaw is breakable. Ah! 
Oh. Hey, Benny, come here. You can see right through him. This is awakening something violent within me. Look at all these instruments of pain. Oh, boy, the things I can do with these. All right, I think that's enough of that. <laughs> All these instruments of pain. Man, that's great. So yeah, that uh, should not be happening with public domain, uh, you know, media because it's public domain. Hmm. All right, so we got. Yeah, I've seen other. I've seen other things get posted that have copyright yet. Like they have people have been posting like 4K remasters of it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a couple of those too. Yeah, because that's the thing. When it's public domain, like you could just do a remaster of it without even dubbing over. Because technically, what um. What uh that guy did? What's what's his name? Uh, I think I closed the video. Brock Baker. Technically, what he did um should be. I think it should be fair use. Like even if it wasn't public domain, because he's completely dubbing over it. I don't think anyone's gonna be mistaking. I mean, I guess he's kind of doing a Mickey Mouse voice, so maybe that wouldn't hold up in court. You know, someone out there's gonna be like, I thought it was the real Mickey. <laughs> I showed it to my children. And they learned 14 new curse words because of it. Okay, well, now, uh, let's see. Dude, your webcam died. Yeah. So, just like Mike's webcam, there's defects with the autopilot safety in Tesla vehicles. Over 2 million of them have been recalled at this point. And it's affecting, I think, the entire lineup, right? Because it says here it's impacting cars across the automaker's lineup from model years 2012 to 2023. I mean, is there any Tesla older than that? I feel like I didn't really hear about Teslas prior to 2012. So it began an investigation more than two years into 11 incidents involving stationary first responder vehicles and Tesla vehicles that were operating with auto steer engaged. <laughs> uh, Tesla cooperated with the investigation, providing extensive information, participating in several meetups with the agency, and ultimately the agency found that Tesla's unique design of its autopilot system can provide inadequate driver engagement and usage controls that can lead to foreseeable misuse of the system. Hmm. That sounds like a fancy way to say people sleep <laughs> while their uh, Teslas are driving. Yeah, so this isn't a uh, a recall in the traditional sense of the word where people are having their cars back to the dealership. This is just an update. It's the same thing as like a security update for an iPhone. It's just oh. that the only reason it's called a recall is because the uh, NHTSA mandated it, which is why it's called a recall. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess in a way, it's um, it's not a recall in the traditional sense where, you know, you have to trade in your car to get a new one because Tesla can just remote into your car and fix it. But I don't know if that's something to be so happy about because, you know, the the smartest minds amongst us, which are, of course, people in the comments section of Fox Business, like uh, LaRoli here. Right? The good, cars can be fixed with a wireless software update. The bad, cars can be accessed with wireless software updates. And, uh, you know, Agent 007 is too based to have a vehicle that vulnerable. So, nothing for him to worry about personally. It doesn't affect him one bit. Literally not my problem. Based Agent 007. Um... 
Oh yeah, they've got a point here about um, what is it? OnStar, SatNav, AutoStart, all that crap for vehicles that are made after 2010 can be wirelessly accessed and wirelessly shut down. Uh, yeah, man. That's man. why I uh, was considering getting a BMW, but they're too spooky nowadays, man. Oh, the Beamers are real spooky these days. They're, they're too spooky. Tesla is using customers as beta testers. Not a good idea when it comes to autonomous vehicles, especially where the beta testers aren't specifically chosen for their abilities and dedication and the fact they don't realize they are beta testers driving potentially unsafe hardware. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty much. And then Tesla was, like, basically trying to blame <laughs> the people for it. They're like, it's all their fault. What are you talking about? Our stuff is totally safe. There's absolutely no danger. It's just some people like to fall asleep behind the wheel, okay? Because when you engage autopilot mode, it sings a lullaby to you. That's just part of the design. AI works better when there's lullabies going off in the background. And uh, this yeah, is I, another I forget thing. What, um, I need to research the video again, but there was a video this guy made. I think he was an ex-Tesla engineer, and he made a video of himself basically running the Tesla autopilot through a series of tests where he put dummy animals and people in the road and seeing if the autopilot would stop, and the shit just ran through them every single <laughs> Damn, dude. That's wild. Yeah, don't a lot of them have issues with seeing black people? Or, like, just darker-skinned people? Because, yeah. uh, I remember that being a thing with, um, uh, what was it, the Xbox 360, I think? Like, the... Because I, I literally knew this dude that, um, liked to play... What was that game called? I think Dance Dance Revolution. And then uh, he ended up joining the Navy later on, go figure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he liked playing that game, but apparently the camera didn't like record him properly and a lot of stuff. And so there were all these bugs. He had to like make sure the room was really, really well lit in order to play it. So I think your vehicle is newer than mine. Does your vehicle have um, CarPlay, Apple CarPlay? Well, I have, I have a 2005 Avalon, but I have dirt oh, cars. Oh, shit, never mind. Car play, okay. yeah. Your yeah. car's made the same years as mine. Well, GM wants to uh, get rid of Apple CarPlay and Android, and they're saying it's totally for our safety. It's totally not about them trying to sell you their own subscription service. So yeah, so oh. they're removing that on their new EVs and eventually all of their future products. So, okay, so they're going to have their own proprietary system in there, I see. Yeah. Like, well, like you said, necessitate a, a subscription service. Because mm -hmm. why even own your car anymore? Yeah, well, they're they're trying to say that part of the reason, you know is uh they want you to stop using your phone while driving so getting rid of carplay that's supposed to be the idea i guess oh they fixed the defect in your camera yeah i gotta get into it dude this thing's like 10 years old <laughs> all right i mean i i get that they don't want people using their phone while they're driving. I mean, all, all, all car companies uh, say that. But with CarPlay, I mean, it's the same shit. You're going to either be looking at by GM or made by Apple. Right, but if you're inside of, you know, GM's little walled garden, then they can more easily control what you do. Mm. Instead of Apple... Or Android controlling what you do. Which, of course, what they want you to do is use the car... They want you to use the phone more. GM wants you to use the car more. So what you're going to do is you're going to pay these... for a phone in your car. We're bringing back the car phone. That's what we're going to do. 
You're going to pay for my, a separate phone in your car that's safer. In my experience, the car interfaces are complete ass in new cars. That's why a lot of them use Apple, like CarPlay or uh, Android Auto, because yeah. it's so much better for a multimedia interface than whatever the car uses. It's really their interfaces are ass because they uh, outsource that development to other companies that uh, went to um, Java schools on YouTube. I mean, I would definitely prefer physical buttons. I don't know if it's just because I'm like a 30-year-old boomer or whatever, but I can't do touchscreen stuff as quickly. Like, I, I have That's to look true. at my phone to... Well, I've never had... I don't think I've ever had a phone with a physical keyboard, have I? I've had phones where it you was haven't? like the regular numeric keypad and you press like A three times or, or like, what was it? Yeah. One three times is a C, like shit like that. Yeah. And you can kind of do that without looking at the keyboard. Like if you just memorize how many letters make up, because some of them I think make up four letters, and I think the majority of them are three. Um, and then I've like had those signs and shit. And I've had the ones with the keyboard. So did you ever get to the point where you had a full QWERTY keyboard on your phone where you could type without looking at the keyboard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can you do that on a touchscreen? As the resident zoomer, in not n not as well as I could on on an actual keyboard. Okay. Like I could probably type, I would say with eighty percent accuracy on on a touchscreen keyboard, without looking at it. Hmm. Okay, maybe that literally is just a generation gap thing then, because I'm terrible at it, man. I I even fat finger shit a lot of the time. Like there's so many. Dude, almost every Google search that I have on my smartphone is misspelled because I end up spelling shit wrong just all the time. Like, uh, what is it? I try typing out Rust and I put in Rist a lot of time, R-I-S-T. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. But um, I can't imagine trying to, like, navigate through menus while I'm driving. Like, how long, how many menus do you have to get to on one of these cars? Because that, that's the way that a lot of cars are going. I mean, Volkswagen, I think, recently decided to bring back a lot of physical knobs. So they're kind of going in the opposite direction. But most new cars, there's not really any knobs or buttons anymore. It's just a touchscreen for, like, climate control. Yeah. Um, I just can't imagine doing that. Yeah. I... It, it does, I have driven in those cars before, and it, it is very annoying. I do, they do design them, make it, uh, they make it very, like, not like an, like an, like a smartphone menu where you go through, like, three different layers to get to something. They tend to make the most critical things readily available, like the climate control, um, radio, and like any other feature like you know using the car phone for example Th those are pretty easy to get to uh the things that you could set like the clock for example or uh changing the speedometer from kilometers to miles or vice versa those are i think you have a noise gate set on your uh microphone uh, I need to move this. I need to move my, my mic a little bit closer. Oh, okay. It kind of sounds like you have a noise gate on it. I mean, I don't know if you. I I probably do. Or not. You might want to turn it off. I had that on my on my mic, in the last episode, and it kept making my voice cut out a lot. But I took it off. So yeah, now you it's... get to enjoy the background hum of my computers. <laughs> it's not as it's not as bad as as you would think it is. But it, I can see how someone would get distracted by it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's not really that. I don't think it's that big a deal for a podcast. Um, but, uh. Oh, anyway. I was talking about the, the screens in the car. Oh, the screens in the car. Well, 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it depends on the person because for me, you know, like I said, I'm a boomer when it comes to a lot of like touchscreen handheld shit. I just don't know how to navigate stuff <laughs> on, on a smartphone. I think that's part of the reason I don't even want to really get a tablet because like I, I think tablets are maybe good for 30 year old boomers like me. I mean, my stepdad, who's an actual boomer, likes his uh, tablet a lot, but I don't know if I if I'll know how to drive the thing. If I get a tablet, I want to be able to basically use it like a laptop though. I want to be able to like code on a tablet and I don't know if there's like a Rust compiler for Android or for Apple. Um I don't know if they have good IDEs. Well, there is Droid Vim. So that's probably what I would just end up using. I don't think you can customize Droid Vim with a VimRC file though. So that kind of sucks. But, um, or, well, it's also based on Vim instead of NeoVim. Because uh, I, I actually started using um, a new text editor slash IDE called NVChad, which is pretty cool. It's, uh, might actually just bring it up real quick in my uh, Rust programming folder. Yeah, so it's like got a few pretty cool features. Um, I'm kind of getting used to the keys and stuff for like bringing up terminals. Um, and then there's a. Uh, oh, never mind. I can't remember what the hotkey is for Vimtree. Uh, I'll find it in a second. Okay, let's see. NVIM tree. It's control N. All right. Yeah, so that brings up like your um, Vim tree or NVIM tree. So you can like navigate files and stuff like that. Um, and that way you can just kind of stay inside of the IDE and um, not use a uh, not use something like VS Code or VS Codium like I was using before. Because I well, you use the open source variant of VS Code. Yeah, of course. I don't want Microsoft mm -hmm. witnessing my transition into a beautiful butterfly. Into a beautiful lady butterfly. Linux <laughs> fanboy. Yeah. So I was using VS Codium for a while. And then I switched to NVChad because it's basically NeoVim with, like, basically NeoVim turned into a full fledged IDE without me having to try to hack together, like, different people's rices and stuff like that i'm actually kind of you know since i'm i'm getting back into learning rust i'm thinking of actually <laughs> getting back into uh the linux rice autism as well but not making my yep. own i'm just going to try out other people's rice like um, further down the linux fanboy tree he goes further down man yeah we'll see how far you get without turning into a fanboy <laughs> never go full fanboy Never go full femboy. Um, oh, no, I got my stuff out of order again. Okay, here we go. So this is another car topic that um, I thought was pretty cool. So Mercedes-Benz, they're now going to... Well, they only have approval to do this, I think, in California and Nevada. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think it's just California and Nevada where they can do this. But the lights on, like, the brake lights, the front lights, there's a few lights basically all around the car 
yeah, like there's kind of a better view of it on the mirrors, front lights, and um, brake lights <clears throat> will all turn turquoise whenever you put the car into a self-driving mode. That way people around you know that the car is self-driving. And that way, if you're someone like me who doesn't trust that shit, you can be like, all right, I'm going to get the fuck away from you. <laughs> or I'm going to pass you and, and, you know, more likely and drive on way down the road. I think this is a really good idea, too. I was I also saw on the Reddit post, people were like, there should be an option to, like, combat um, road rage. Where, like, if you do something where you fucked up on the road, you can, like, what would be a good color for that? Maybe, like, purple or... What's the least offensive color? Pink. Least offensive color that isn't already taken by lights on a car. Yeah. Um, like an arm sorry or, or color. World lights. Yellow. I like purple. Purple, pink. Yellow is already used for, for uh, turn signals. Oh, yeah, you're right. So just like flashing purple lights if you cut someone off by accident or you do something else that's ridiculous. <laughs> And that's totally know that you're driving like a like a retard, yeah. That's totally gonna fight road rage. Someone's gonna be driving up with you next to you with a gun ready to fucking just mag dump you. And they're like, oh, purple lights. Alright. Put the gun away. <laughs> you could see purple lights in every street down here up here, man. Yeah. Every other fucking street be purple. Oh, I didn't pull this story, but I was watching something about this the other day. 13-year-old is the first human to beat Tetris. Did you hear about this? I did. I, I saw I saw the video. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's like, really cool, because it's, like... So it's the same issue, more or less, that, um, like, Pac-Man has, because I think Pac-Man has the most famous, like, kill screen of all time, where you get to level 256. It causes a buffer overflow, I think, with the level counter... And then it basically makes the whole map get screwed up because it's accessing parts of memory it's not supposed to. But with Tetris, there's a lot of buffer overflows that can happen and like weird parts of memory can get access for a long time before the game crashes. Because all of this like um, background and stuff, like let's see, this is a... Uh... Yeah, like this level here... I think is like a glitched, um, or definitely this one is. Or no, that one might be a legit one too, I don't know. There's these patterns that are like really glitched, like color patterns, I'm pretty sure this is one. Where it's like the parts of memory for the color palette or whatever that it's accessing, it's like, I don't know, trying to access parts of memory that are used for the score or for other things. And there's one that's really hard because it's like the same color as um, as the background. But for the longest time, nobody even knew about these levels because like, what was it? Back in the really early days of Tetris, they didn't know the like techniques to do. I think it's like a roll or something like that. Like there's a certain way you have to hit the button to actually be able to move that fast because the blocks... Just goes so freaking fast. Like, this isn't sped up or anything like that. And, um... Oh, you know what? I bet you it's after the level overflows. Because it looks like it goes to 999. Yeah. Or no, that's the lines count. Okay. Yeah, so then it turns to A00. And this is definitely... Like, glitched uh, blocks and stuff like that. And there's one called, um, there's one called Dusk, which is pretty hard. Like, already this looks really hard to see. Yeah. Especially because the blocks are moving. Like, how much... You get, like, I would say half a second. Yeah. To react in place, which is kind of insane. But you could probably do that with the with, with enough training. This is the one that they call charcoal, where it's like they're literally black. You yeah, how do you even see, see this. that, man? Yeah. <laughs> but he managed to get past it. 
Yeah, because they had an AI. Like, the, the first thing that actually managed to crash Tetris was an AI that somebody wrote to play Tetris. And that's the only reason that people even knew that a lot of these blocks existed. Like, these extra levels and stuff. But someone made a full breakdown where it's like, once you start getting into these broken levels, there's like very specific ways to crash the game. Like you have to make sure you get exactly like one line on the bottom eliminated or like three lines in the middle. And it's only like 70 or 80% chances to crash the game on certain levels. Like I think he got to one and he missed it. And he was like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah, that's where he crashes it in, like, just under two minutes. Like, how do you see this? Oh my gosh, my boomer eyes can't deal with this. I can barely see that shit. <laughs> yeah, this kid, this kid is insane. I wonder if the developers, when they were programming this, knew about that. Like, the Pac-Man developers must have known about that buffer overflow. I mean, when does it ever stop? Like, I guess maybe this could be an overflow as well, but it's using hexadecimal now, I think. So three digits in hexadecimal, that's that's a lot of levels. Got to calculate it. I missed it. Four thousand ninety-six levels. Jeez, man. Yeah, when he said he missed it, like that that was one opportunity to crash it that he knew he had. Oh, I see the level counter now. It's just like randomly going from 90 something to 18. There he goes. Oh my god! He did it! This kid crashed a game that's older than him. Legend. Yes. Oh my god. First human being to ever do it, too. Now what I've got to wonder, I mean, it seems like from what I watched that the community was pretty cool to him, but imagine, because like most of the speedrunners of this game I feel like are older people. Yeah. And it's like, imagine you spend 40 something years trying to be the best at Tetris, and you get bested by this kid, man. But yeah, that's, that's when you need to accept your, your life and go touch grass. Right, yeah, what's, what's, what's his name? Blue Scooty. Blue Scooty is the legend who beat Tetris. All right, so we got to stop talking about the heck NVIDIA games and, and get back to the car topics. In fact, you know what? China regulating how much people can play video games is why they're beating us at electric vehicles now. Because uh, there's this Chinese company, BYD, is set to overtake Tesla as the world's biggest electric vehicle maker. Because this BYD car, I mean, for one, it's a lot cheaper. The BYDs are um, $31,000 for a new BYD vehicle. That's like half of a Tesla, right? Well, I guess you could get used Teslas. You know, this isn't comparing uh, the minimum cost you could get. Can the BYD Dolphin swim? in America's market. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think I would... Get, if I was going to get an electric vehicle, I don't think I would get a Chinese one. I don't I don't trust yeah, a Chinese a lot electric of, car. Yeah, a lot of those Chinese cars are made for the domestic market. So, you can have Chinese cars that outsell American cars in the, because a lot of Chinese people buy Chinese cars. Right. As like, a, as, like, a matter of pride. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe... The concern with maybe BYD's batteries are not that concerning because I was looking into the company a little bit and apparently they make the batteries for, I think, more smartphones and consumer devices than any. Like, they're the biggest battery manufacturer. 
Like that's a big reason why they're able to overtake Tesla. Cause I, I don't know if Tesla necessarily makes their own batteries, but BYD owns like the whole supply chain for making batteries. So that's, that's a big reason why they're probably able to make them so cheap. But like anytime I think of Chinese batteries, I think of fire. <laughs> I just think of like it's, scooters and shit that catch and fi- on fire in people's homes. Like those little, uh, wasn't there one that was popping in the U S like the hoverboard or something like that? Yeah. That like hot fire. of fires. Yeah. It's like, geez, man, but it can happen to other batteries. I mean, the, uh, was it the note seven was a Korean battery that had fires. Yeah. Uh, Samsung, uh, Panasonic makes Tesla's batteries for them. Panasonic makes it okay. Panasonic manufactures their batteries. Yes. Mm. Uh, Panasonic is the production leader, but the people who make the most are a contemporary Amperex technology line who make it in Shanghai. Interesting. That sounds like the same company that makes the batteries for um, Pixel phones. Because I was trying to figure out, because like it said that uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of different like consumer electronics use them, but I was trying to figure out, like, okay, do I have any consumer electronics that use a BYD battery? But yeah, everything I was rating was like... Obviously, Samsung makes their own, because I think Samsung is like the second biggest. Samsung actually has an investment in BYD. They invested a lot of money in them. Yeah, uh, probably this probably won't overtake the U.S. market, but for the uh, what do they call it, S S A E market, it might overtake it. And um, EMEA, like Europe, yeah. Europe might accept the Chinese. Uh, some countries are in Europe are actually they're trying to get to majority EVs. I think Germany's one of them where they want the majority of their vehicles to be EVs, or they might even... I don't think they're there already. But they're really trying to push for that. Yeah, when I was when I was in Iceland, there were a shit ton of EVs. Like, I would think every... Every third or fourth car, I think, was an EV. Oh, wow. So maybe they are actually to majority EVs. And I mean, gas was hella expensive up there. I think it was, like, close to... Well, yeah. Six to eight dollars a gallon. I also don't, I, I feel like it's set up better, or like most European countries at least are set up better to have like EV domination because I just feel like they don't have to drive that far. Yeah. In Europe, it seems like everything is so close together. Um, you've got trains that can take you places and plus train, like public transport is way better, at least from the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, in Europe versus America, and it actually takes you places. So it's like, yeah, EVs and. I think their electricity is also generally cleaner, although I don't know, because they're not... I think France is the only country that's really into nuclear. And the rest of them, it's more like solar, windmills, hydroelectric. But France be doing that nuclear. Yeah, because all the normies watch Chernobyl and Fukushima and think that nuclear is scary. It is, man. when nowadays it's probably it I think it has the second lowest death rate of all renewable fuels or all renewable energy uh methods below solar. Hmm. So wind wind has higher death rate than nuclear. Now, what I would wonder though for um for nuclear versus solar is are they counting the deaths of people who have to mine the stuff to make those because i feel like with i might be wrong but i feel like with uh well i i know this so i know as far as nuclear goes mining uranium is pretty dangerous because there's well you know that happens in third world countries we don't care about that <laughs> You're right. Get back in the silicone <laughs> mines. Actually, maybe it's not that dangerous because isn't, isn't that the main thing? Silicone. Well, you need lithium too. I feel like lithium mining yeah. might be a little bit dangerous. Lithium mining is pretty toxic. Yeah. Yeah. And then with 
nuclear, it really depends on whether you're mining uranium or whether you're doing um, thorium, which I don't think anyone really does thorium right now. Well, <clears throat> like, raw uranium is pretty safe. Like, unrefined uranium is pretty safe. Well, it's, the, it's the not refining the, part. Yeah, it's, it's not the... So, with mining... Because I, I watched something about this pretty recently. So, with mining uranium, the real risk is exposure to radon gas. Because there's a lot of radon exposure that you deal with in uranium. And I think also... Um, you have to... I don't think you can mine it in open pit mines. I think that's another... At least in terms of comparing it to thorium. Because, like, I was watching this whole thing about, uh... Like, thorium versus uranium. And thorium is better in most ways. The only exceptions are... Well, you have to use a new design of reactor to do thorium. So it's like... I guess you'd have to retrofit old reactors or build new reactors to do thorium. But the main issue with thorium is that you need to have a... Um, you got to have another radioactive element, which is typically plutonium, to get it started. You only need a little bit of plutonium, but plutonium is really easy to make nuclear weapons out of. So that's the reason why governments don't want... Like, and that's probably the main holdup that there is for uh, thorium reactors. Because thorium is way more abundant than uranium mm. is. Like, I think it's literally the most abundant, like nuclear or radioactive element that we know how to make power with well unless you count fusion then of course it's hydrogen or tritium or whatever fusing that into uh helium yeah fusion's a little more unstable isn't it though um well or is that backwards as far as maintaining the reaction goes there's no like there's no worries of runaway chain reactions with fusion, and, and really there isn't with modern fission either. Because um, the way that modern nuclear reactors fail is if the temperature gets too high, like basically there's a... Um, oh man, I don't know math terms. So as the temperature goes up, the reaction actually slows down in a modern nuclear reactor. So runaway meltdowns are not even a thing anymore. They're not possible because as it gets hotter and hotter, the efficiency goes down. And with um, some of them, they also have uh, like passive safeties. Like the newest, the newest ones have it so that if the um, material gets too hot, it basically melts down into like a giant lead chamber or something like that. And it immediately stops the reaction. So it's like, it's it's way more safer. But yeah, like you were saying earlier, normies are so afraid of like 30 people getting cancer as opposed to 30 million people getting cancer from literally, literal radioactive material getting emitted into the atmosphere from coal power plants. Because that's what happens when you burn coal. Yep. You breathe in radioactive crap. So yeah, and, and a lot of that energy is unironically going into NVIDIA graphics cards <laughs> <laughs> that are sucking that power out of the wall because uh, NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, predicts that our AI is going to achieve thinking and learning at a competitive level to human beings within five years. Hmm... The man who possibly stands to make the most money off of AI because he makes the heckin' AI GPU boxes thinks in just five years we're going to be replaced by artificial intelligence. You think that's an accurate timeline or you think we got more time? Or do we have less time? Might it be five months? Well, I... I don't think you're going to get AGI anytime soon because not only do you have, I mean, I know NVIDIA probably has the ability and the capacity to start making GPUs capable of supporting AGI, but 
in order to have general intelligence, you would require like like a multitudes more power than you actually have right now to uh to do the to do the AI you have. Well, because okay. right now the AI that you would have to have capable of handling context. Well, let's uh, let's look at AGI as Jensen defines it, right? Because this is the quote that they took from him. So he says, if we define AGI as a piece of software or a computer that can take a whole bunch of tests and these tests reflect basic intelligence and by completing those tests, they deliver results fairly competitive to a normal human. I would say within the next five years, you can see AI that can achieve those tests. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate. Considering how, like, a year ago, some of the biggest news about, like, not not even AGI, but just, uh, like, what, what do they call it? Um, large language models were able to literally take tests for people, do their homework, or, or not do their homework, but you have to be able to prompt it. So I don't think you can necessarily sit an AI down in front of like an SAT and it'll take it for you. But if you copy paste all of those questions, it'll probably give you right answers most of the time, so long as the AI hasn't been nerfed, which a lot of those AIs have been nerfed. So that's a, that's a big question as to whether or not you're actually gonna get accurate information out of the AI now. Um, yeah, they dominate the market for AI applications. Their revenue rose 206% over the prior year. Who boy. That's another one of them stocks to have. NVIDIA. I don't think I'm invested in NVIDIA. Pretty sure my stepdad is. He does stocks more often than I do. Uh, and the United Kingdom pledged to spend hundreds of millions of pounds on chips to help boost its own AI development ambitions. Everyone's trying to make a heckin' AI, man. Well, the UK has ARM, so... But ARM... ARM doesn't really make a whole lot of money off their, uh, off their chips, though. All right, let's 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 see what the best and brightest amongst us have to say. No echo chambers, please. They have a long way to go. In my personal experience, chat GPT-4 tends to make basic math mistakes, is not able to synthesize information between two fields of knowledge the way a professional is expected to, cannot understand new ideas unless they are already in social media somewhere. As an aid to research, they are incredible. Relying on them to do research is a recipe for stagnation. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. Yeah. That's why I kind of roll my eyes at people who try to be like, oh, yeah, I consulted ChatGPT on this. It's like, bro, Chat consulting ChatGPT is literally just a lazier version of Google searching. Have you ever seen, um, I don't know if it's the second or first Wreck-It Ralph. I think it's the, the second one. The second one where they make a bunch of internet memes. I haven't, I haven't seen either Wreck It okay. Ralphs. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it when I was when I was a teenager, and there's the way I explain AI to there, there's a part in the video where they do this bit on Google, essentially, like what Google, and it's essentially this guy. He looks like a librarian, and they ask him a question, and he like pauses five seconds and then starts listing off things at the that's what chat gpt is to me is you ask it a question and it essentially does but it does it faster and gives you a contextual answer and hmm yeah, Result. I think I think you've got uh definitely got a noise gate on your uh Bro, hold on. on your thing. Or what it might be is you might want to change the app to be press a key to speak instead of pick up your voice automatically. Cuz it uh it cuts out a lot. 
But, um, yeah, I mean, um, I don't think it's going to be quite five years. I mean, I, what I really think is going to end up happening with the AI stuff is it's going to, it's going to be the same way that search engines were, right? Like people probably thought, oh, the internet is going to get rid of a lot of jobs. And in some ways it does, but it ends up creating new jobs ultimately. Like, you know, you get rid of like, I don't know, maybe 60 jobs that are kind of antiquated anyway, and you end up getting like 100 plus new jobs that people could do, you know, where it's like, hey, man, just learn to code, bro. Just put on the programming yeah, uh, socks, learn yeah, search Rust. engineers? What, what do they call them? Prompt like, engineers. Yeah, prompt engineers, yeah. Yeah, become a prompt engineer. That's right, the future is now, old man. It's not like we're sitting around using uh 86 dos which was just recently uploaded to the internet for the first time prior to this only 10 people had ever used 86 dos and i downloaded it um the image file because you can just get it here at this link from archive.org but um it like i don't know if you can run it in uh QEMU. Yeah, that's the ISO image available for download. I think you have to use DOSBox. Maybe. I, I don't know. I was I was gonna look at it again when I had some more time <laughs> to uh to mess with this stuff. Dude, copyright nineteen eighty by Seattle Computer Products. This is version 86 DOS version 0.1 C. Damn, man. Way back in time. To the good old days before we had to worry about AI. Yeah. I I read that there isn't a whole lot on, on that DOS. Like there's a couple of simple utilities in a chess game. Yeah. You play chess on 86 DOS. Yeah, there's not a whole lot on there, but it's just like, I guess it's just interesting from the archival history standpoint. Yeah. Because um, I think NT Dev tweeted that like prior to that. Um, oh yeah, I think there's literally the link to his tweet. Like. Yeah, less than ten people had seen this until now. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool from just the uh, you know archival like well I guess it's still not technically open source but it's uh, open to be used now you know like a test um, not even beta like an alpha copy of DOS yeah man I have a uh, I have a power PC six hundred one sitting in my basement I want to get working for a video resurrect it yeah. I've never actually had to deal with a PC that old before, and I'm refurbishing, so... Mm. What kind of RAM does that take? I have no fucking clue. I think it has... I looked up specs, generally. I think it has 512 megabytes. That sounds like... It might even just be regular DDR, not even like DDR2. Damn, that's real old. <laughs> that's wild, and we're on, what, DDR5 now? Yeah. Number just keeps going up. Got to be invested in NVIDIA and Apple and, and all these people that just keep making the number go up. All the numbers keep going up. Apple's going to be a quadrillion-dollar company one day, and we're going to have a million gigabytes of RAM. All right, so... <laughs> If you're a Comcast customer, or you were a Comcast customer, because you know these companies like to hang on to your data for a while, you know, Comcast Xfinity, hackers might have your information, guys. They might have it. So there's this vulnerability that a lot of companies have been hit with already. Um, a uh, commercial bank in China, Boeing, Allen and Avery. Vulnerability called Citrix Bleed, found in Cit Citrix networking devices that are often used by big corporations. And oftentimes, 
these devices do not get patched or updated within appropriate time frames because that's the thing like these companies like citrix they do release patches right they're like hey guys um you know we found this major exploit that lets people just log into your stuff and here's a fix for it but then these giant companies that have like massive device sprawl they don't end up actually patching those devices so yeah yeah this um the hackers exploiting citrix bleed had access to comcast's internal systems between october 16th and october 19th but the company did not detect the malicious activity until october the 25th and by november 16th xfinity determined that information was already acquired by the hackers and in december the company concluded that this information included uh, customer data, such as usernames and hash passwords. Now, one thing I will mention about um, <clears throat> hash passwords, well, here's the thing, right? So if you hash a password, depending on whether or not you use a good password and depending on whether or not they do what's called salting the password, it might be pretty easy to reverse engineer that. So basically, what hashing does is it takes, you know, like regular text, okay? So like your password, we'll say it's password one, two, three, four, and it runs it through this one-way function that turns it into a big garbled mess, right? And typically these days they'll be using like, I think SHA-256, is uh, pretty much standard these days. No one's really using MD5 anymore. And um, I forget whether there's been collisions found for uh, SHA-256 yet in the wild or not, but it's, you know, pretty secure. So, but you can, you can not reverse that, but you can compute the same hash if somebody pretty much knows your password, right? So the way that they would do that is if I think your password is password123, I run hashcat on, you know, a list of words, list of passwords like password123, you know, whatever else. And it outputs that hash. And then if they match, then I know, oh, okay, yeah, your password really is password123. And um well, they said usernames and hashed passwords, so the, the usernames probably aren't hashed. So another thing that a lot of people tend to do is they use the same, well, they tend to use the same username and the same password, right? So somebody getting your Xfinity account information might not be that big a deal, especially now that they know a data breach has happened. So maybe they take additional measures to like lock down people's accounts, you know, IP restrict them and things like that. But if you use the same username on other platforms, with the same password, or especially the same email, right? Then hackers are gonna start breaking into all your other um, accounts. And the thing is, unless you use a password manager, it's pretty much a guarantee that all of your passwords are either the same or your passwords are very simple permutations of one another. Like maybe, you know, you have a standard password, which is like, We'll call it like your pet's name, the brand of your vehicle, and then maybe it's the year you're born, right? So two words and numbers, and maybe there's like a dollar sign at the end. But then the password for your Facebook account is the same thing, but instead of a dollar sign, you put a pound sign. Or maybe instead of the full year of your birth, like 1985, you just put 85. Like these are real simple permutations that hackers know to try. So this is the reason why you really, really need to use a password manager. Because if you did, even if your plain text password got leaked, it doesn't matter. You're not using that anywhere else. I mean, sure, they can access your uh, Xfinity account, which like I said, Xfinity, Comcast probably took a lot of steps to uh, mitigate that access anyway after they found out that this breach happened. So that part's not really a big deal. It's more them getting access to all your other accounts where you're using the same passwords.
clarification to use a local password manager and not like a dash lane or one password. Well, yeah, if you're using a cloud-based solution and it's a collective cloud, then hackers are more likely to hit that because there's so many credentials that they could get. And, uh, oh, uh, was it Dashlane where they got social engineered? I forget which one it was. Yeah, it was Dashlane. It was Dashlane. Yeah. Someone called their tech support and they're like, um, I need access to everything. <laughs> Can you give me that, please? Thank you. And the FBI also, uh, you know, apparently took down, well, took down, you know, these hacker groups are like the Hydra, right? You t take off one head and two more pop up. Uh, Alf V slash Black Cat. I did a few stories about these guys because um, they had a site on the dark web that the FBI apparently seized. Um... Let's see, do we have a picture of the uh, Justice Department in a press release? Okay, this probably has a picture of the C site. Ah, it doesn't, but you know, it's it's pretty standard uh, FBI seizure or whatever on the dot .onion site. But then somebody on Twitter said that they managed to come back. Uh, they claim that the FBI compromised one of their domain controllers... Additionally, they state they are removing all rules from their affiliate program, omit the rule on targeting the CIS, allowing affiliates to target critical infrastructure. Yeah, because with these guys, you can... Um, I think the way that they work is they basically offer ransomware as a service. So you take your, uh, you know, Monero or Bitcoin, you know, whatever cryptocurrencies they accept... You give it to them and you say, hey, I want you to hack this. I want you to hack that. But they had some rules where they're like, hey, we're not going to hack critical infrastructure. And I think it might have been like hospitals and some stuff like that. But now that the FBI has uh, tried going to war with them, everything's on the table. So oh, we're going to see some more outages, guys. <laughs> We're, we're going to see. And they, they do the double. Um, oh, man. what what There's a word for it. I can't remember what it's called. Like, they don't just run ransomware, but they also steal data from people as well. And then they threaten to publish it online if they don't pay the ransom. Double extortion. That's the word. Double extortion ransomware. So my backups are important, man. It is why backups are important and why uh, just doing, like, really, it's mitigating device sprawl and mitigating system sprawl because that's how they get that foothold. If something is out of date, they get a hold into your network and then they can start pivoting to other devices. But uh, we've also got some news about good hackers. These Polish hackers who repaired trains that the manufacturer artificially bricked, and now the train company is threatening to sue them. <laughs> so these are, um, like I said, these are Polish trains, and uh, I guess Polish hackers as well. And what's the name of this company? Newag, N-E-W-A-G, the manufacturer of the Impulse family of trains put code in the train's control system that prevented them from running if a GPS tracker detected that it spent a certain number of days in an independent repair company's maintenance center and also prevented it from running if certain components had been replaced without a manufacturer approved serial number. The anti-repair mechanism is called parts pairing and is common frustration for farmers who want to repair their John Deere tractors without authorization from the company. It's also used by Apple to prevent the independent repair of iPhones. That's why, uh, you know, things like uh, the fingerprint sensor wouldn't work and uh, like bootleg iPhone repairs and stuff like that. So in this case, a Polish train operator called Lower Silicon Railway, which operates regional train services from Roklaw, purchased 11 impulse trains. It began to do regular maintenance on the trains using an independent company called 
Oh boy. Uh, Servus Pajordo Sino something. SPS. <laughs> Which notes on its website that many Polish carriers have trusted us with train maintenance. Over the course of maintaining four different impulse trains, SPS found serious errors that prevented them from running. SPS became desperate and Googled Polish hackers and came across a group called Dragon Sector, a reverse engineering team made up of white hat hackers. The trains had just undergone mandatory maintenance after having traveled a million kilometers. So you have to contact, you know, white hat hackers, which are the good hackers, by the way. Okay, these are people who only hack for good uh, and for the purposes of fighting like DRM and stuff like that. And now they're getting sued. The last, the rehiring of Dragon Sector was a last resort in 2021. An independent train workshop won a maintenance tender for some trains made by Newegg, but it turned out that they didn't start after servicing, Dragon Sector told me hired us to analyze the issue and we discovered a workshop detection system built into train software which bricked the trains after some conditions were met two of the trains even used a list of precise gps coordinates of competitors workshops wow so they're they're actually putting a good deal of effort into making sure that your train breaks if you take it to a non-approved workshop that's wild yeah that's like some fbi shit See, I don't know if this video is going to play because I'm on archive.org. I actually don't think it's a video I want to play anyway. Um, they were able, but Dragon Sector was able to bypass the measures and fix the train. The group posted a YouTube video of the train operating properly after they'd worked on it, which, uh, yeah, I don't think this video is going to work. Let's see. Oh, it does work. Okay. Just had to get out of archive.org. I'm coming home. I'm co I don't know about that music. Look at it. A working Polish train. That would have just been a heap, a heap of junk. I mean, this... I, I think the company that made these trains is in Europe, so if they are... This seems like something that would be up the EU's alley to, like, regulate big tech. Quit regulating our big tech and regulate your own big tech. That's yeah, pulling this the seems same like kind of shenanigans. That, this seems like something the notoriously feverish EU watchdogs tend to go after. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, it's a train, dude. Like, the EU is all about trains, and they're making trains not do the thing. Like, that's one of the main things that they do better than us. So, sue people, right? Go after companies that purposefully make trains no longer train. Because training is important in Europe. It's also important for um, companies to be more aware of social engineering. Because that's the most effective form of hacking. And even Verizon's falling for it. They fell for a fake search warrant, and they gave a victim's phone data to a stalker. A female victim's address and phone logs to alleged stalker who pretended to be a police officer, according to an affidavit filed by an FBI special agent. I'm not surprised. Yep. Just, oh yeah, you're a cop. Okay, here's all the information. Police. Horizon does not pay... Uh... Verizon does not pay top dollar for security people. Definitely not. So the man, Robert Michael Glauner, was arrested near the victim's home and found to be carrying a knife at the time. Glauner allegedly traveled from New Mexico to Raleigh, North Carolina. That's, dude. Damn. Homie literally traveled across the country. Across... Like two time zones to to do the kidnapping. <laughs> After finding out where she lived and before arriving, sent a threatening message that said, If I can't have you, no one can. 
He also allegedly threatened to send nude photos of the victim to her family members. Clowner was charged yesterday with stalking and found in connection with obtaining confidential phone records in U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of North Carolina. Yeah, they're they're probably going to send him to the feds for that. That's that's federal crime, pretty sure. <clears throat> yeah, man, cross state lines. Whoa. Okay, hold up. This is this is interesting. Yeah, I read this part last night, and I was like, this this is why I'm fairly certain they didn't pay top dollar for for security because th- th- i i wouldn't fall for this shit man glowner and the victim met in august or september 2023 on xhamster.com which has dating features apparently i didn't know that and they had an Damn. online romantic what relationship the victim what? ended the relationship but glowner continued to contact or try to contact her so this i feel like this is like because obviously there's there's tears to dating apps right like that's something i've noticed on dating apps where it's like you know tinder is like just for like thoughts right like that's for that's that's for chuck and chuck accessories <laughs> And then you've got other ones where I guess like uh, maybe Bumble is supposed to be more for a relationship. But bro, if you're straight up on a porn site <laughs> meeting people, like what are you doing? Like especially as a woman, like I can understand a guy trying to like, well, even a guy. Because I, I feel like all those ads on porn sites are like the most obvious fake nonsense. <laughs> like hot singles in your area. That stuff literally started on sites like X Hamster. That's wild. So, uh, yeah, ended the relationship, continued to contact or try to contact her. Glowner tricked Verizon into providing sensitive information by sending an email and fake search warrant to vsat.cc at one.verizon.com, the email address for the Verizon security assistance team, which handles legal requests. Verizon didn't realize the request was fraudulent, even though it came from a Proton Mail address. <laughs> Rather than from a police department, yeah, because totally, totally, <laughs> totally, your local sheriff would use proton mail address over their official government pro- email address that they're given. Does it say his? Oh no! So the so it was Stephen nineteen sixty six C at proton dot me. I wish he would have made his thing like the police <laughs> at proton dot me. <laughs> Just like it's so obvious. Uh, so an email to Verizon on September 26th said, here's the PDF file for a search warrant. We are in need if the person that the cell phone data as soon as possible to locate and apprehend the suspect. We also need the full name of this Verizon subscriber and the new phone number that has been assigned to her. Thank you. The email's attached document contained a fake affidavit written by Detective Stephen Cooper of the Cary, North Carolina Police Department. Cary Police Department confirmed there is no officer named Stephen Cooper. I mean, yeah, that's just a name pulled right out of an ass. Stephen Cooper. That's like a John Smith. Visa received a phone call the same day from a man identifying himself as Cooper who stated that he needed information on a suspect in a homicide case. The caller stated that the person involved changed her phone number. The fake affidavit asked for the new phone number as well as call records, both outgoing and incoming, and locations and text messages, incoming and outgoing. So, I mean, this this just goes to show you, right? Like, how... Like, imagine how much is sent to the police when it actually is the police, right? Because there was no... There was clearly no warrant. Like, I don't, I don't see a warrant mentioned anywhere in here. So, they don't... Like, Verizon doesn't just give up this data from a warrant like they say that they do verizon's website says the verizon security team ensures that court orders search warrants subpoenas and other legal demands served upon verizon are processed confidentially and in compliance with the applicable law i mean there was a signed affidavit but i don't think that's as uh i feel like that's a lot easier to get well it's obviously fake anyway but it's not as like you know, serious as a warrant. Yeah. I mean, that's wild. I mean, read, reading, if you read deeper into this article, it, it's pretty obvious this guy is not like your average cybersecurity expert, which tells you a whole lot about how good uh, Verizon's security assistance team is. That some random 
fucking Coomer with probably zero cybersecurity training was able to un probably unknowingly uh like he probably didn't know that he was actually socially engineering uh the security assistance team managed to do that. Oh, like man. they're not they're not hiring their best, Kenny. They're not hiring their best. They're really not hiring their best. They're not. This, this dude is a psycho. Like seriously. Yeah, look, like, look, look at the look at the bottom. It makes it pretty obvious about what this guy is. The bottom. No, bottom of the article. Bottom of the article. Sorry. Yeah, where he's talking about getting a rifle. Last paragraph. A search of the Jeep Cherokee allegedly turned up a glass meth pipe. Ah, eight grams of methamphetamine. Well, that'll get you across the country. <laughs> that's yep. one way to do it. Holy cow, that's a lot of meth. And Imagine being on, on the security assistance team for Verizon and getting fished by a fucking meth. <laughs> Jesus, dude, that's wild. Damn. Holy cow. Well, you know, I don't I don't even know why the uh, police and, and, and well, I guess this is FBI, right? The FBI get to do four more months of warrantless spying. Because uh, back in December, they approved an eight hundred eighty six billion dollar defense policy bill that includes a four month extension extension to Section 702 the controversial surveillance tool that allows American intelligence to potentially spy on its citizens and permanent residents. Ah, uh, so hackers can get our information and anyone who's good enough to impersonate an FBI agent to Verizon security team can get our data as well. It's wild, man. Yeah, I mean, I've I've told people that you might as well just accept that data is out there. Like, there's no putting that there's no putting that cat back in the bag. So you might as well just accept that it's out there and try to limit any new data that you can put out. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with uh, that idea. And also... I mean, you can you can scrub data. Like, there are people. Um, uh, shoot, uh, there's this podcast I used to listen to. I think it was called. Was it OPSEC? I, I'm going to go find it, but there was this podcast. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, queuing, up, I'm queuing up queuing up the stuff for the last uh, the last segment. Uh, let me look at my podcast history here and see if I can find the show that I listened to previously. Uh... Yeah, I mean you can have data scrubbed, but I don't I don't know how effective it really is for uh you know like actually getting um data removed because Barbara Streisand tried doing that crap and you know that's why we now have the Streisand effect. Because when you try scrubbing that stuff, it just ends up making well Sometimes, depending on how famous you are. If you're famous, it's going to end up... Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to end up causing it to, you know, go out there more, right? It's going to cause it to get Streisand affected. All right, let's see. That one's marked as uh, NSFW, but maybe it'll be appropriate for YouTube. All right, and, um, huh. oh, yeah, French toast alert system. Check that out later. All right, so our last uh, strictly, well, I guess this isn't strictly a tech topic, but I'm interested to get your opinions on this. So scammers are tricking anti-vaxxers into buying fake medical documents. So basically, you know, th this, this is the consequence of base posting being allowed on Twitter. So on Twitter, I think you're allowed to, you know, t 
talk about uh, COVID-19. I, I don't think you're necessarily allowed to say it's fake, but you can definitely... Uh, what, what was the the word that they kept repeating? Trust the experts, right? Yep. You could do the opposite on, on Twitter, right? X. You're allowed to question the experts. And obviously a lot of people do that, right? A lot of people uh, do their own medical research via like the Joe Rogan experience and places like that. <laughs> and uh, they get some pretty interesting ideas. Dude, actually, I, I had a conversation from uh, one of the people that lives near my farm about um, what's it called? Ivermectin being used to treat because he was like boy i tell you i don't think he did it himself but he really believed in it he's like yeah, yeah. ivermectin that's they said that's why they weren't afraid of uh covid because they had ivermectin on deck because they're horse farmers <laughs> <laughs> or they have horses they they have fucking everything on that on their farm but um these these guys though um they would host these groups on telegram and a lot of them would actually have doctor in their name. Like, there are people on Telegram straight up impersonating doctors. They're like, yeah, my name is Dr. Collins, Dr. Stevens. And they, like, will take pictures from a real doctor from, like, Facebook. And they're like, yeah, totally. Your doctor's on Telegram. <laughs> of all applications. Your doctor is on Telegram. And um, it was 25 different channels where administrators use doctor prefix in their username with 13 of the channels using real world names and or photographs of legitimate medical professionals. <laughs> and so, um, there were thousands of accounts on X that were posting, promoting these links to these groups on telegram that were selling vaccine passes that, um, basically would say that you had had a vaccine you know like it's a fake document saying that you know you're vaccinated and stuff which you've got to imagine something like that's probably pretty difficult to fake i mean i don't know how much effort they actually put into the covid vaccine verification cards or whatever i never had to worry about any of that um because you know when you're self-employed you don't have to get the vax if you don't want to but um they say that overall the social media operation reached more than 3 million people with over 62,000 posts. And if you track the cryptocurrency, or at least the ones you can track, who knows if they're using Monero or not, the efforts have processed $286,000. So I'm wondering, Mike, what your thoughts on this are. Do you think people should be allowed to buy bogus nonsense with cryptocurrency? from fake doctors on telegram <laughs> i'm okay with this i'm totally fine yeah i mean people have been buying snake oil for you know hundreds of years now right like you had people back in the 1800s 1700s that would travel to these towns and be like i have a vial of fucking cornmeal and opium this shit will cure anything <laughs> people would buy it Cornflakes and, and opium, man. That's that's how I start every morning. <laughs> the I, said, cor I, said, I, said cor I said cornmeal and opium. Oh, cornmeal. Yeah. I was envisioning cornflakes. I was envisioning the cornflakes box, but instead of Tony the Tiger, it's got George Floyd on the front of it. This <laughs> 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 one <a> thumbs up. <laughs> fentanyl flakes. <laughs> now with extra fentanyl. <laughs> oh man and, that's great so i mean people are consenting to buy this then that's fine because I, I have i have the same opinion about this as i do about you know getting uh gender reassignment surgery where if you want to go ahead and openly sterilize yourself and remove yourself from the population i'm not gonna stop you I mean, if you're if you're openly consenting and willing to do that, then I'm not going to stop you. Because at the end of the day, if you want to be a Darwinist, you know, the people who don't fall for this bullshit will end up living and procreating. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, at least as you know, with the with the transgender thing, as long as they're like an adult, you know, which 
yeah. I don't know. I guess there's a whole question of that too, as far as like who adults should be and who they shouldn't be. Because I still kind of feel like a like because there's people out there who are grown, like who are older than me, and they're just not responsible at all. And every time I run into people like that, I'm like, man, if only there was some kind of like ritual that we had to go through in order to become an adult, like back in the ancient tribal days where you had to like kill a lion and dip your spear in its blood and come back to the village with that bloody spear or you were never a man. (laughs) But, uh, you know, anyway, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that as well, where, um, You know, man, listen, if you want to buy some fucking ivermectin or you want to buy some fucking overpriced zinc pills from Alex Jones because you don't want to listen to fucking Fauci or whoever else is shilling whatever vaccines, just just do your thing, man. Do your thing, you know? Uh, If I wouldn't get, if it wouldn't get me canceled off of YouTube, I probably would sell some fucking bogus covid stuff on base dot when some type of elixir yeah, COVID, anti-covid bracelets anti-covid 5g bracelets no i want to sell like kombucha <laughs> anti-covid kombucha or something like that yeah the eggs here you go that's 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 my anti-covid the I eggs are anti-covid really... yeah the yeah. eggs are anti-covid i i have i have a semi-related story so i had covid Only last week right I, I had COVID last week. Did you have and, Omicron? Um, Did you get the latest variant? No, I had I had Optimus. Damn. This boy had, had Optimus De- COVID. This boy had. I thought this boy was gonna have Decepticon COVID, but he ended up getting an Autobot COVID. Okay. So have you seen those uh, those Star those not Starbucks, fucking Panera charge drinks that people have been having? Maybe. Yeah, so we had a, um, so there are these drinks that uh, Panera sells where they have, they're, they're called charged lemonades, and they have, I think, close to 150 to 200 milligrams caffeine in them for, like, okay. a large drink. Okay. Yeah. That's more than a Red Bull. Yeah, and, and they're openly selling them to, to people without people knowing that they actually had that much caffeine like like when you buy a red bull you know there's a lot of caffeine in it because it's 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 marketed as an energy drink but i don't and, but you don't necessarily know how much like just just brief interjection yeah here. i i bought red bull the other day because i was really tired and i almost bought a prime because i was about to be like oh you know i've seen this a lot like i kind of want to try it i know it's an energy drink but prime 12 ounce prime has twice as much caffeine as a 12 ounce red bull yeah but but you know when you're buying a red bull it's an energy drink right yeah, I know it's an energy yeah, drink, but it on the you might not, but it doesn't necessarily say how many milligrams of caffeine is in there, and that's yeah. a big difference. But you can you can you can look at the back. Yeah, yeah, you can look at the back of the can and see. Maybe it right? does. I don't think it does because I had to Google it, but I was oh. also tired, so you know. Well, <laughs> apparently people died from from drinking that the the charged lemonade because people didn't know it had a ton of caffeine in them, and people who were susceptible to that shit drank it and had a heart attack. God, that's and brutal. died uh and now when because i went to panera one of those days and i ordered like a plain black tea mm-hmm. and there's a fucking warning that comes up on the screen whenever you order a drink saying this shit has hella caffeine yo uh don't drink it if you have medical conditions and one of my relatives ordered us soup uh because we had we were sick and lo and behold they get us the the fucking drinks and I'm like, no, haram, get get this shit out. I'm not <laughs> drinking this crap. <clears throat> yeah. Especially, yeah, I, I was like, I don't want that shit. So I just dumped it. And I told her, I was like, God, that, that shit's kind of bad. For, I mean, for me, I'd be fine. But I don't want the rest of my family drinking that shit. Yeah, true. You know? So I was like, I, no. So it, the, some of the shit out there, man, that people would be selling is fucking crazy. It it, but if, if, they're, if they're willing and consenting and openly, you know, want to buy it, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are pulling scams. Um, these are some of the lamer scams, if you ask me. I feel like they're not even really scams that people pull 
in the U.S. I feel like I always see this in third world countries, but it's a good PSA regardless, especially if you're living in a third world country. Get yourself a dash cam yep. because insurance fraud scams are wild. So there's a couple of them that I pulled. Actually, we'll mute this. That's probably illegal music. Yeah, like this one here, like <laughs> it was so low effort too. <laughs> That's like, it's it's like, that's her teacher who's like teaching her how to pull insurance. It, it looks like he's trying to come up and do something, but it's like. I love, I love when he stops and she, <laughs> he just runs into the car anyway. <laughs> Wait, I think this I looks think, like uh... this looks like it was almost filmed for a, a TV show or something and they botched the spot. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> it, it's like she was filming. For, for like a, a, a CSI episode and she just botched it. <laughs> and then her like, I don't know, her mentor or whatever this guy over here is just looks so disappointed. Like, no, redo. This one was a little bit better though. Let's see, can we do sound on this? Yes, we can. Oh, she actually got hit though. She, yeah, she's okay though. Just a little bump. <laughs> he keeps going. He's like, "Fuck that." Yeah, cause it's a, it's a freaking scam, dude. Like, you just come out of nowhere, and you like, purposefully hit. So yeah, the the only way this is gonna stop is if either more people start putting dash cams on their vehicles, or, or, we start speeding up <laughs> when there's pedestrians <laughs> in the road. That, that, that's that's what I'm saying. Is like this is this is really fucking stupid. Because like, what if you legitimately get like your fucking spine snapped or something? Because of yeah. this. So like you did this for what a ten thousand dollar payout, and you fucking yeah, right. crippled yourself. Congratulations! Yeah. Worst deal in the history of deals. That'll that'll nip this in the bud real quick. Now, this one was, uh, I mean, all these videos are a little bit crazy, but this one was really wild, man. This magnesium fire. Isn't that what they're uh, using in um, Israel right now? Or no, that's phosphorus, right? White phosphorus. Yeah. But dude, these magnesium fires. Man. Uh, the, the ADL said we can't, we can't talk about the white phosphorus. Damn, bro. <laughs> He's dead. He's not dead. <laughs> Because he's wearing protective gear. That's probably the only thing saving him. Is he, is he blinded? He, he's, but he's see, still... what's wild is he did it twice. Because <laughs> it's like, he's okay. Trying... It's like, all right. I'm going to spray it. <laughs> Boom. And it's like, all right. That was a mistake. And hit it again. And then someone in the background yells stop and he finally <laughs> It's like you had to be told. Yeah, you really had to be told to stop that. You think after the first time blew up in his face, he'd be like, okay, no. <laughs> it's like magnesium fire, burn me once. Shame on shame on me. <laughs> this is why I say that firefighters are probably more based than uh think policemen. Because like you know if that was that was a person and that was a police officer. He would have already shot him. Firefighter gets fucking blown up in the face with magnesium. He's like, ah, try yeah. it again. So th this was another video that the ADL requested I show because um, in addition to no Mel Gibson, they want me to also stop advocating for firearms because there's absolutely no reason that you need a firearm. And this is the perfect example. Um, we're going to see a man, a real man, right? I'm not a real man because I have firearms. Um, but we're going to see what a real man can do with a paintball gun. Okay. You don't need real firearms, folks. All you need is a pair of Carhartt jeans and a paintball gun. You can handle any problem. Okay, it's a brown bear. 
What do you mean, okay, it's a brown bear? That's the worst well, kind dude, besides brown polar bears. Are, bears. Brown no, bears are fucking retarded, dude. You're thinking of black bears. You're mixing your bears up. Oh, yeah, you're right. Brown bears I are am. a problem. <laughs> That's right. Black bears are the fucking retarded ones. That's right. If it's yeah. brown, gun it down. <laughs> Yeah, if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, get on the ground or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. But yeah, this dude managed to handle it with a freaking paintball gun. That's insane. This dude is wild for doing this crap. Because I would not <laughs> just know. That's crazy. All the way out. <laughs> like, oh my it's a good looking paintball gun, though. Man, that video's wild. This one's pretty wild, too. You ever wonder how you mount an antenna on a mountain? This is how. Oh boy, that audio is peeping. Um, here it is. Are these guys Chinese? Is this in China? Looks like. Damn, dude. Is this how they also do it in the US? Yeah, but it would take seven months. Mm, someone said they did it in Australia. Um, someone said they did it in Colorado. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the way to do it, though. <clears throat> uh, maybe it's a white guy. I don't know. Maybe it's not in an Asian country. This, I'm pretty sure, came from an Asian country. Because... <laughs> Every every part of this video is just you get what you deserve, honestly. So yeah, this guy is screwing around with a snake, and uh, he gives it a single point of contact, his neck. So the snake's like, "Oh no, I don't want to fall down to the ground." Yeah, yeah, real impressive. Until it's not. <laughs> until until it uh, what do they call those All again? Over. Constrictors? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. His, his arm's doing the thing. Uh-huh. And just some little kids there watching. This is an important lesson, kids. Yeah, don't, don't openly put a boa constrictor around your neck. And then this is the best medical staff ever. You just yank the thing off of him? Yank the thing off of him. Let his head flop on the ground. <laughs> pick him up. Flop him again. No stabilization of the head. Just just have several, the head flopping around. Several concussions. Yeah, several concussions. Carry him off. Drop him again. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> dropped him in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dropped him again. He might be fine from the constrictor, but he had several concussions from the fact that the yeah. two fucking attendees. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because like dropped them three times. Because he's only out for like, let's see, he's out from. 18 seconds he's going down. Okay, 20 he's out. So he's out at 20. And they get the snake off of him. Around 47 seconds. So he's he's only really out for 20 seconds, which is still a lot of time. So, you know, maybe he lost like 10 or 12 IQ points from getting choked out. But man, that's like, that's, that's like 20 every time they dinged his head. Yeah. Homie ain't going to be doing a whole lot of math anymore. So uh, next we've got these German and French uh, agriculture protesters. Where um, I think I think it's all to do with like taxes and like diesel prices and stuff like that. 
So this is this is how Sneed gets down in Europe. Europe is no match for the for the Chad European farmer. Is he dumping? Oh, he's dumping hay. He's okay. dumping manure. Ha. That's that's soiled hay. <laughs> Somebody cleaned out the cattle pen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, just just dump that all over there. There you go. <laughs> now this is based. Yes, it is. This is why you don't mess with a man who owns a tractor. <laughs> we are Sneeders. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. <laughs> man, this is this is such a great video. I love this video. Just jam up the traffic, go over the hedgerows, dump the crap, <laughs> just everywhere. Oh man, yeah, Sneeders get down. Sneeders with heavy Sneed machinery, they get down. And uh, this guy gets down too. <laughs> so, uh... You know, when I was talking about how to how to drink properly, this guy is going to do the opposite of drinking properly and drink uh, improperly. Do not try this at home. Yeah. Now, for those of you who doubt my hillbilly fortitude, let me show you here what we're working with. This man looks like you're somebody Sam. Can't see a thing, can you? Come a little closer. Listen here. That there's good old corn liquor right there. Here's what we're going to do with it. Cheers. Oh! <laughs> I dare you to a shot! That day. What that was Red that? Bull gave you that wings. That's what he said. Well, he said corn liquor, which, you know, basically oh. is moonshine. And, uh,. I mean, depending on how strong it is, because I, I think that's, normally... That's pretty close to ethanol, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. when So when you... It, it all depends on how your distiller is set up, right? Because typically, like, like you've bought alcohol before and you've heard of it being like triple distilled, right? Yeah. Usually when people are making moonshine, like illegally, they're not necessarily doing all that. They're just distilling it like once, maybe twice. Um, cause to get really, really strong alcohol, typically what you end up doing is you run it through a distiller once, which is basically evaporating alcohol vapor as well as water vapor and, um, you know, maybe some other things. And then, you know, it drips off into like a cold medium, right? Like it condenses and then comes out as a liquid. So when you do that the first time, you probably get like... I don't know, maybe like 80 or 100 proof. Um, but then you can run it again, where you basically take the alcohol you just made, dump it into the first part of your distiller where you're like heating it up. So now you're heating up like actual alcohol. <laughs> and then that goes back through the process and then it like doubles the proof. So it could be anywhere from like, you know, 40 to 160. Um, I'm going to go more with 40. Because of how much he just drank. Because that's a whole jar of moonshine. Which is like... I don't know. At least ten shots. It's a lot. Damn. <laughs> I thought it be a shot! It could even be water, technically, but... Yeah. That bull give you wings. Or oh, that moonshine give you four-wheel drive. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. That four wheel drive looked pretty convincing. <laughs> first things first, dude. It might be. It might be. Yeah. So this guy's got four wheel drive. When a uh, judge denies <laughs> your probation I for uh, for aggravated battery, right? And in fact, let's let's do a quick quiz, okay? If you've been in jail for aggravated battery, and you're now at your sentence hearing or your appeal or whatever to get probation and the judge denies you, do you A, stand up and say, that's not very cool, judge. 
B, accept your defeat, go back to jail and, and work on the next appeal process. Or C, <laughs> do some aggravated battery towards the judge. Well, this this man here... Uh, all right, so she puts her glasses on. She glances he, down for a second. Picked, All of a sudden, he she a realizes letter. the defendant of this case is coming after her, and she tries to move out <laughs> Damn, of the way. Damn, that was a jump. You know, he frog splashed. <laughs> Down. There's a security it's exactly, guard there man. just steps away, but it takes him a minute you, you to react, frog and splash. then you've got another courtroom official as well. Whoa! So, uh, the suspect now identified as Delone Redden tackles the judge. Beats that her. is uh, like a, a pretty good frog splash. Yeah, right? Over, over the judge, like you're at, like the judge is at a higher elevation too. Harm. Like the judge is probably yeah, about, yeah. like he had to clear the, the judge's bench too. That's what I'm saying. This guy has that... incredible hops, and then midair said, "Body become horizontal." <laughs> and he flew over the barrier. Like that's some WWE <laughs> shit. That that was that was pretty impressive. Yeah. So this this guy's His going to jail for again for a long time, judge, and uh, prompting him. But but on the upside, when he gets out, he all Vic, Vince McMahon has already signed a contract. <laughs> yep, that that man can frog splash. This is the new naturally. John Cena, guys. He's gonna be Bing chilling in no time, <laughs> getting all that, all that Chinese money. So, uh, <laughs> this is a great video. I love this video. Cause uh, for those of you that have never been in the hood before, <laughs> this is the kind of shenanigans that take place in the hood. I mean, on any given night, honestly, but. Definitely on like New Year's, uh, Thanksgiving, anytime there's a celebration because uh, people in the hood don't seem to understand how gravity works. Um, in fact, it really just doesn't. In Milwaukee, there is no such thing as gravity. Now, what I'm about to show y'all, I am by no means proud of, but I feel like when I said I was from Milwaukee, it was a little bit too many of y'all trying to play the city. So now I got to show y'all how they get down. How many seconds we got left? Oh, they going crazy already. Just another day in Milwaukee. And they're all shooting straight up, by the way. Like, in case you were wondering, oh, are these guys following the rules of gun safety by knowing their target and what's behind it? They're like, yeah, bitch, I looked at the Hubble Space Telescope. Boom, 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 boom! <laughs> I'm shooting E.T., motherfucker! This is lanky-ass telescope-looking motherfucker pulled up in the hood. We just standing around. We sitting ducks. Come on, let's go. Y'all get the picture. That's how it be. Like when uh, the fucking Florida people gather together to shoot the hurricane. Oh, yes! That's how it be out here in these streets. Just, just, yeah. That's why I say, like, if you ever try to invade the U.S., it'd be fucking disastrous. Because not only would you have the professionally trained army, you'd just have, like, Jamal and his bros. Now, to be fair, fucking... though, Jamal and his bros are aiming their guns sideways. and they're... <laughs> That is true. And... They wouldn't hit anything. And they're but using, maybe they, uh... like, hit one or two of your guys and they're using high points in dracos and the <laughs> they're using the most <laughs> absurd weapons of all time they're loading multiple calibers within their handguns somehow they're just shoving whatever fits in there oh man you know, it's probably a good thing that more dudes in the hood don't use uh, ARs, because I guarantee you there would be more videos of um, people loading, what is it, I think 300 Blackout is like the same size as 556, but it's a much higher pressure, and if you shoot 500 or 300 Blackout out of a standard AR-15, your gun's going to explode. It's like guaranteed. So uh, maybe it's a good thing that these guys are using Dracos that just jam and don't necessarily explode. So yeah, um, you can smell this video, by the way. This video is smell-o-vision. So, 
there is a random car fire in the Congo, and there is also a septic tank on the road, so... That's, that's what you do. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is one way to put a fire out, but it's gotta smell awful. Because you're burning... shit piss. I mean, if it works, it works. Also, wouldn't this have some methane in it? I mean, probably not enough to make probably. the fire worse, but it's probably less effective than, than water. But I mean, it looks like it's working. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works, man. Yeah. If it works, it works. And then, uh, let's see. And this is our last one. Our last video of the Libre podcast. Here, here. What number did you say? Four. Four. Cop Five gets a call to investigate Four. a crack house. Although when I watched He's this, it looked more like a crack He's mansion to me. I mean, it's a big ass house. Who are you talking to? The, the oh, okay. Okay. Four. It's gonna come out of nowhere. <laughs> Man, someone, someone needs to make, like, a video game <laughs> based on this. Because this really feels like playing a spooky video game right now. Yeah, it's some Resident Evil type shit right now, man. Props though for this guy not having his gun drawn twenty like immediately when he walks in the door. I mean, I think I don't know the exact circumstances of this, but if it's crackhead in a house it's not supposed to be in, the gun comes out. The gun should be out because <laughs> that's an unpredictable person in an unpredictable place. Wait, you run away? Yeah, fuck yeah, you run away! Dude! The lights don't work in that house, and I don't know if you noticed, but, you know... I, I couldn't see shit. Yeah. Like, exactly. I thought he opened the door, and then he just fucking... dipped. Moose? You can kind of see him. For, for like a split second. What's that? I think is the guy. That looks like it might be the gun right there. Yeah, I see him. There he is, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, things get real spooky real quick. <laughs> he ran all the way. I just think it's funny. He ran all the, all the way outside. Well, hell yeah. You don't know the layout of this place? I think that might be the gun right there. Yeah, so he has, he has it up. Like He's ready to shoot. I can't tell if that was the cop shooting or the other guy. It kind of looks like he, like, right before jumping down the second flight of stairs, like, popped off two shots. Yeah, it seems like he grew. He gone. Stop fire! This man's already two blocks away from Luigi's Whoa, mansion. Get in the car! Kill that! Stop fire! <laughs> Shots fired! Yeah, he's, shots he's, fired! He's running. I repeat, we have shots fired! Kill that! One of the only uh, Kill known that. video Kill that. police Let's officer being able to run at full sprint. We have shots fired. We're at 2023. Man. East 81st. Right now, right now. We need 911 right now. Kill that kid in the car and take you to the hospital. Damn. Adrenaline is a hell of a drug, guys. Well, that is it. For this episode of the Libre Podcast. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to shop on base.win and also check out Mike's channel, The Employed Linux User. Peace.